Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lawful Stupid and Biting Malevolence, the Hamlet. I am your dread master, Red. And with me are our brave adventurers into the dark unknown. So, I'm going to have our adventurers introduce themselves, starting with Osric. Hi, I'm Carl. Uh, tonight I'm playing Bosric Cobb, a half-orc samurai. Clovis? Hello. I'll be playing Clovis Alwarith, a cleric of the civilization god Stendar. Queden. Hello. My name is Austin. Today I'll be playing Queden Zanosk, a verbal cleric of Zarakis. Zir. Hi, my name's Moira. Um, I'll be playing Zir, a phantom rogue that also goes by Death. And Mizura. Hello, I'm Dwarf, and I'll be playing Mizura Cabris, uh, warlock housing more than a few secrets. Excellent. Now, before we begin, I want to give everyone a brief warning. This is a horror campaign, and as such, there are going to be a lot of heavy topics and some things that people might find upsetting or downright terrible to behold. So please, if you are frightened, if anything bothers you, take a step away and come back. I assure you, it will be worth it to stay. Today we do have one trigger warning. Um, if anyone in the audience has a metaphobia, there will be a brief scene. Um, it's not anything major, but just you'll know when it's about to come. Maybe take your headphones off and take a step away. Also, yes, um, I'm going to go ahead and announce it. Uh, happy birthday to our warlock. Thank you very much for joining us on this auspicious day. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but without further ado... Let us descend into the biting malevolence. By a cosmic fluke, the plain of Wilderglade directly borders the Feywild, and the rocks, the water, and even the air itself is saturated with its fickle magic. Trees grow tall and thick enough to blot out the sun, and the animals grow to impossible size. Such is the power of this realm's magical blood that even dreams have power. Individuals with the will to harness the wild tempest of arcane energy will find their every desire laid out before them. Of course, for every dream, there are nightmares, and willpower is not the exclusive providence of the pure of heart. On the continent of Ravania, the coastal region of Silvervale calls to those with gold to spend or wares to trade. Of all the kingdoms in the realm, it is the busiest, and on its southernmost point, the city of Tanis is its shining jewel. Situated high above the sea on a sheer cliff face, its wealth comes from the great ships moored in the port at the cliff's base. Long has Tanis stood as the capital of trade in the region, but the affluence has attracted more than just merchants and dignitaries. A group of noble thieves and assassins known as the Black Alley District secretly direct the politics of the city, and by extension, all of Silvervale. These thieves answer to a being known only as the Grey Matron, a figure of shadow said to have been in power since the city's founding. All should be in perfection in this city, and so it was, until the mists came. Legend tells that every one hundred years a city vanishes below an otherworldly mist. Some of the inhabitants die upon exposure, their bodies reduced to husks in a matter of moments. Others are unaffected, and left to wonder why they were spared. The luckiest or perhaps unluckiest, of the city's denizens find themselves changed. They begin to manifest strange powers, and within a month's time, they vanish into the wilds outside their city's walls. Within a week of their disappearance, the mists will recede, and nothing will be left of the town, as if it had blown away with the western wind. It has been one month since the mist fell over Silvervale, and already the city is changed. The glittering sapphire of Ravania is much tarnished, and every day more succumb to the mysterious illness the mist brings. Some claim to smell something in the air, an odor of deep places and prolonged decay. It is now, in the heart of a forsaken city, 
that our tale begins. Welcome, brave adventurers all, to the Biding Malevolence. We travel first to the outskirts of the city, to a charnel house, a place of death, a place no sane person would go. There we find two figures. One, an older elven man, heaps bodies into a pile. Looking on, a tall, sunken figure judges what he is doing with an unwary hand. The elf throws a final body onto the pile, brushes the dust from his hands, and turns. Right then, Queden, I think that's about it. Could you get the torch for us? Of course. The numbers grow larger every day. Oh, I bet they do. It's this mist, I'll tell you. Of course. Feels... Well. Of course, it's up to us to clean up the mess. Oh, yeah. I suppose it is. So, Quedon, what would you like to do? Uh, I, I go and fetch the torch. And can you describe what this elf sees as he looks upon you, Quedon, so that everyone knows sort of what you look like? Absolutely. Uh, he is... Uh, he is a furbolg, so rather tall, but lo like he's losing like at least a foot with his slouch. Um, he like on first glance, almost like childlike in features. You know, he's, he's got blue gray skin, almost like a rock come to life, uh, with like his hair giving off almost moss, uh, and you know, like rosy red nose and ears. Um, but then the closer you get, the more, like, his stare really sinks into you. Just sunken eyes, uh, one hell of an RBF. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Uh, and just not a, not a great, not a great vibe. Not a, a omen of death. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's all right. <laughs> all right. So, um, Quedon, you would know that this man is, um, High Priest Zandril. Um, you have probably been staying with Zandril since the city was put into quarantine. Absolutely. Um, he's been very kind. Um, he kind of directs people away from you. Um, but you've had a few sleepless nights where the town's children and occasionally some of the town's adults have thrown stones at the window of the room you're staying in. So, that what would you like to do? Typical. Uh, what what time of day? It's end of the day. We're uh, yeah. With... The sun is about to sink into the horizon to herald dusk. Mm. I have not done great at getting rest over the last couple of days. I I suppose I should just go up and what 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 staying area? What what room do I have at this? Um, so it is a simple shack. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, Zandril is not one to normally um, have guests. Except company, so he has sure. he's kind of made up his attic for you as best he can. It's a simple sleeping roll because being a furball, you would not fit in any bed he could have for you. Um, Certainly not. Um, I think I'm just going to, you know, after picking up the scraps and another day of, you know, more and more deaths, not knowing, you know, not being able to honor them in the way that he is used to feeling at a loss for answers or much to do in, in the way of his God or, or his paths. He's just going to go up and, Try to, you know, do some silent prayers, 
some note taking in his journal. Uh, it's going to take some time alone. <laughs> All right. Um, while you are taking time alone, we will travel deeper into the heart of the city. Not only into the heart, but about 20 feet below the street. Below the city of Tanis, there is an undercity, known to those above and below as the Black Alley District, a den of thieves and assassins who secretly run the politics. And at the center, well, actually, I'll let them decide. Zir, in your room shared with your three siblings, where do we find you? And what do we find you doing? I think I am sat cross-legged on the floor. Um, when you look at Zir, she's younger, um, a nice, fresh babe. She's 19, <laughs> but um, still kind of a baby face. She's in all blue. She has this um, blue kind of peasant shirt, but this really beautiful embroidered blue and gold cloak. Um, which matches, though in different colors, the cloaks of her siblings. Um, and she is just adorned in tons of jewelry. And she's a satyr, so she's got two little horns and this, like, long, creamy, platinum blonde hair. Um, and I want to say she's sitting cross-legged on the floor. The siblings are arranged either at their bed or, you know, sitting at a table. And I think we're all playing a game of some sort of our own creation um some kind of 21 questions type <laughs> <laughs> just just messing with each other okay um so as you're playing this game um Leif a tall but rather slight minotaur who seems of all of them the largest but also the quietest of the bunch says oh, all right, Zir, it's, uh, it's your question. And I think you need to ask... You should ask Gwynthalia. Gwynthalia hasn't answered any questions, and uh, Gwynthalia kind of shoots Leif a glare. Says, I've answered plenty. Not enough, though, I don't think. Um, let's she see. She rolls her eyes. Fine, fine, ask your question. My question, well, I think is, is the person you're thinking of old and crooked? Old, yes. Crooked, no. Hmm. And I meant that both ways. Well, I suppose, then, the second way it would be up to, well, those that view them. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Mainland has all and just chuckles at the corner. Well, what's funny? The crookedness? Have you already figured it out? You always figure it out first. It's not fair. Sorry, I just... Well, I hesitate to say I'm smarter than you, but at this point you hear a... I'll kick your ass. ...click <laughs> on the ground <laughs> of a stick connecting. I do hope that I'm not interrupting children. And as all of the heads turn to the door, you see, standing at her full height, a very tall um, ratkin. Uh, she stands... She's tall for a ratkin. She stands about 5'7". Um, and she has white fur around the corners of her eyes to denote her age, but she carries herself like someone much younger. Um, she is balancing on her tail. Her feet and hands are bound, and she leans on a cane. Everyone knows her as the Grey Matron, the leader of the Black Alley District, but the four of you know her by a different name. So as Lady Kellebeck walks in, what do you say? Oh, um, no, you're not interrupting at all. What is it this time? 
I have a job for the four of you, if you think you can carry it out, if I'm not... The subject of your games again. And Gwenthalia rolls her eyes. I'm sorry, Mother, but you're just the best target. Be that as it may. It you was Mom. Ugh, okay. I get it now. The four of you are my best agents, for obvious reasons. You are my four horsemen. And as she says this, she leans down and she kind of pinches yours and Gwenthalia's cheek. Gwenthalia slaps her hand away, but you can see, you know Gwendalia, you can see that she liked it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we haven't failed a mission yet, as far as I know, so... No, you Happy haven't. to be of service. But the business with that, uh, that elf boy, the one who worships the turtle, we need to be more careful. You know I don't like calling in the Shadow Walker. Hmm. Understood. Now, with the city in lockdown, there are merchants here with far too much gold and nowhere to spend it. Mm -hmm. One of them is staying at a local tavern, the Flying Cloud. You would know the Flying Cloud. It's, you've been there before. Go there and relieve him of his purse. He should be there a little bit after dusk. Take your time. Gather what you need. Of course, you know, you have access to the armory and whatever else you need, but try to keep damage to a minimum if you could. And as she says this, she looks directly at Leif, who kind of sinks further. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. I'm so proud of you. Oh. And as she turns, um, she... Roll a perception check for me. Actually. Yeah. First roll, First roll of, of the, the game. game. First roll <laughs> of the game. It is a 15. Okay. Um, okay. So we'll move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm so excited. My mama is proud of me. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yes. So what would you like to do? Um, I think for the most part, in terms of armory or prep, um, we already kind of have what we're interested in and need. So I think really what we've heard is an opportunity to go out and about. Um, <laughs> so we would probably leave right away, maybe take our cloaks off um, and store them. I think we have like this big bundle bag that we keep like our cloaks in when we're walking around so it's not recognizable. Um, and we would just go wander the streets for a little bit until, until the time comes. Okay. Um, as you walk out on the streets, the mist that has been here for the past month is still thick in the air. And mm -hmm. there's that sickly smell that you can smell it, but your family can't. They don't notice the smell like you do. Mm. But it stings your nostrils as you walk out. I'm... Ready for this to be over. I feel like we don't get to go out as much. It's not as exciting. It stinks all the time. Uh, Leif says, well, if, if you b believe the rumors, then if the smoke goes, we go with it. I, I don't want to go anywhere. But mom will protect us, right? I mean, she's, she's mom. We can protect ourselves, first of all. I think we're quite capable of that. But second of all, there's no... What basis do those rumors have? They're called rumors for a reason, I would assume. Yeah, I, I know. I'm, I'm being silly. It's... it's Just forget it. Let's, let's go. Perfect. That will draw us to an alley close to the exit from the Black Alley District, where, watching from the shadows just to make sure that his services will not be required, is a shadowy figure in a dark cloak. Mazora, you describe yourselves for us. In this moment, you see a tall, strong but lean man, exposed arms, um, studded leather um, that actually leads off to almost a kind of a short trench in the back. Um, 
with uh, pants and a dark, um, almost navy blue cloak lined orange, if you're close enough to see it, with large brown boots. I'm just standing there, a little weary in the eyes, some bags under them, as I pet. Uh, gi- uh, actually would be a giant goat um, with a saddle. Um, so this goat, to the untrained eye from far away, would probably look like a normal goat, but on closer inspection, it is not. The eyes are sunken in, the head looks almost skull-like. There are four horns instead of two. And the teeth that stick out underneath the d- the goats, I almost called it the dwarfs, the goats' what? upper lip are long and sharp like a wolf's. As I pet, uh, I'll go, I hate waiting the most, don't you? And Waiting. You're like watching, hunting. The prey moves and we stuck. You always paint the prettiest pictures. That's why I always bring you with me. Gratitude. And I'll just begin to peer out looking for anyone headed in my direction. Um, you do see some people, um, kind of moving about, um, particularly you see a paladin in dark black armor bearing the symbol of the raven god Garashi. Um, he carries his spear of office and he has the long feather-winged cloak. And um, as he walks closer, the goat's head kind of twitches as if his eyes don't work, but he can hear the creature walking up and his lips peel back to see that all of his teeth are that sharp, kind of wolf-like. Um, as look. yeah, a, as he bares his teeth, I'll step in front and start making a petting motion and just say, let's make not make ourselves too much of a target. Godborn filth. But he is a shadow walker, as are we. We will hear what he has to say. Hmm. Um, and as the, uh, the paladin, uh, walks up, um, you would recognize him as one of the feathers of Garashi. The feathers are a specific paladin order of the God of Shadows. They give up their name upon the induction, and their job is basically to sort of be dark enforcers. If the Assassins of Nixus are the Master Assassins, these are the Dread Knights that you send in to send a message. Nixus removes people, these guys scare people. And as he walks up to you, he gives you a salute. He says, Shade Walker. I'll clasp on my chest. Any news? None as of yet. The mist stays low. It's sitting. Even across the city still, the the black rock, they're calling it. Have you found anything? I haven't found anything. I'm playing a waiting game right now. Right. Just waiting to be of use. Well, if there's one good thing about all this, at least there were no magisters in the city when it shot down. I can't stand those pricks. Well, you know my love of them. Yeah, you would love them more than most, I suppose. And he puts emphasis on love as he says it. And uh, at the emphasis of love, I just uh, just kind of rub the top of my uh, my sensor whip, uh, the sensor itself, and go, yeah, I always like to bring them some light. And uh, the sensor whip is uh, about 15 feet of chain um, looped and wrapped around the, coiled around the 
the side of my belt, ending in a small sensor um, that resembles a lantern. So Let's he see. kind of... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and he just pats on it once more and then just uh, lets uh, it fall back to slightly behind his hind quarter. He kind of cranes his head past you um, and then looks back at you. We'll see the horsemen are on the move. Anything we should be concerned about? No, I don't think. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're... Whatever they do is going to be quite innocent. Um, low impact. Um, so I, w I wouldn't worry about them right now. Um, uh, I'll, I'll try to keep an eye on them from time to time, but I think we'll be okay. As I look around uh, for any emissary of the <laughs> uh, of the Black Alley District, uh, if if they were doing something of notice or notoriety, we would have known by now. Um, so you hear a soft buzzing, and landing on your shoulder is a clockwork moth. And okay. the moth clicks its head and chitters its wings, and then its back unfolds, and you see a small scroll of paper. I reach up. Pull out the uh, parchment, unravel it, start to read. Um, it says, very simple, um, service is not required, simple job, maintain vigil. Hmm. I'll take it and uh, I'll use, uh, just hold it in my fingers and then use uh, pressure digitation to light it on fire. Okay. And let it flare up. As I said, nothing to be worried about. Right then. Well, we'll... <coughs> <coughs> Bloody cough. You can find us if you need us. <laughs> Moth. And you, I? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Oi. He gives you the salute again and then turns and walks off. Um. So before he walks off, I'll give him a silver. Um. Get a drink. Wash down, wet that uh, throat a little. Thank you very much, sir. And he uh, walks off. So as you look on the four horsemen as they move through the streets of the city, we move to the selfsame Flying Cloud Tavern. It is busy for this time of day, but that is because there are people with nowhere to go. Sitting as far from the hustle and bustle as he possibly can, because while he does love cities, he does not like crowds, we find a young half-elven man, his nose buried in a book. Clovis, can you describe yourself for us, please? Uh, Clovis is a gaunt young man who appears to be late 20s, early 30s. He is remarkably pale skinned, with dark brown hair and light brown eyes. There's a dullness about his coloring, as if someone had leached some of it away. Uh, looking at him gives the impression that he spent his entire life indoors under closed curtain and candlelight, which is not entirely incorrect. Um, he is wearing a uh, simple priest's cassock, uh, and a glimmer of chain mail peeks out from underneath it. Uh, it is mostly black with pale purple accents, and is embroidered on the chest and on the sash with the imagery of a geometrically stylized turtle shell, which is the symbol of his deity, Stendar. Uh, his hair is cropped on the sides with a longer fringe of hair on top. It attempts to be styled, but manages only to be an attractive mess. His expression is one of general discomfort. He appears unable to stand his current circumstances, but is closer to panic or fear than to anger in this crowded tavern. Excellent. Um, so, Clovis, as you're reading your book, you can hear the hustle and bustle of us, the usual tavern. Um, and then, bursting through the door, you see a wood elf 
dressed in fine clothing, um, long red robes. He says, get out of my way, I need a drink, I've had a long and terrible day. And trailing him, you see three members of what you recognize, because you have worked with them before, as the Vermilion Vigil. You see two humans in simple plate armor, and at the head, you see someone you have met before. You see a young half-orc. Osric, would you mind describing yourself? Osric Cobb is 6'2", so actually pushing on the shorter side for a half-orc, um, relatively speaking. He's got actually very tan skin. Uh, the tusk teeth are not too prominent, actually. He's got long black hair that is almost but not quite the texture of dreadlocks. Like, it hasn't fully gotten there, but it kind of has that shag look to it. He's got uh, brown eyes. He's wearing uh, chainmail, and over the chainmail is a tunic with a it's bright red with a yellow falcon head turned to the side with the eye uh, staring prominently at you, which is the symbol of the Vermilion Vigil. And um, he's armed. He's got a crossbow slung over one shoulder, shield slung over his side is a trusty uh, elven forged longsword, and on his face is a rather vacant look, as if as if he's miles away, and it's not a happy place that he's at. So as this merchant bursts in, he um, turns back to the Vermilion Vigil and waves you off and says, Go, go, be elsewhere. I need a drink, and I need to not smell the stink of metal and work on myself, and he makes his way over to the bar. So, Clovis, how do you react to this intrusion into your wonderful reading space? Well, it really wasn't much of a wonderful space to begin with, all things considered. Um, uh, but I think Clovis has sort of tried to fold himself into the corner of the bar as much as possible, to avoid people and noise. Um, hearing the Vermilion Guard come in, though, I think he realizes, uh, and, and especially with this rowdy merchant, that's not going to happen. Um, and I think with the kind of day that he's having, Clovis might do something uncharacteristic and approach the bar. Okay. Um, so you approach the bar. Um, Bosric, how are you responding to being dismissed? Um, I would have actually, would ironically, been heading to the bar, obviously looking where I'm going to make sure I don't run into anyone, but not really processing people, just kind of heading to the bar and... One, please. Thank you. Your usual ale, then, sir. Oh, uh, that'll do. He, um, slides you a... Um, tankard of ale, and Clovis, as you are approaching the bar, you hear a ring, kind of like tinnitus, in your ear, and all the sounds go quiet. And you hear a voice that you've heard before in your dreams. Hello, my lad. Are you well? God, is that you? Yes, my son, it is I. And you see, oh, walking out of the back, fading through people as if he is made of smoke, an elderly tortoise with what appears to be a city made of sand on his shell. He leans on a stick, stylized to look like a Greek column, and at his side you can see a mace Stylized like a censer. No one else seems to notice him, and they seem to pass through him as if he's made of smoke. You look, um... Well, my lord. You look tired, my son. It's this mist. It's, uh creeps into my bones like the cold from a bath 
drawn too long of her. It does, I'm afraid. It, it burdens my beautiful city. Yes, Would ma'am. you cure my city for me, my oh. son? If it is in my power, yeah, yes. Clovis, are you carrying your shield of office? Uh, yes. I think it is uh, sort of haphazardly slung over Clovis's back. Uh, he's entirely uncomfortable with the idea of carrying any tool of war whatsoever. Um, but because it was given to him and it bears the standard of his god, he wouldn't leave it around. Um, All right. Cool. Um, Bosric, while this is happening, I'm mm -hmm. just going to cut out. Make a really quick perception check for me. Well, actually, because you said you were being vacant, what is your passive perception? Passive perception? Because I don't think is... you're actively looking for anything. 13. Okay, I think because um, we are in sort of the center of everything, um, you would be able to notice this out of the corner of your eye. You don't have to react to it, but you would you would see the half-elf that you had escorted um, some months prior um, walking up to the bar, looking uncomfortable, and then suddenly his hands drop to his side, his mouth goes agape, and his head kind of lulls to the side. So now we're going to go back to Clovis. Kneel, my son. Of and course. I will bestow my blessing upon you. So he um, leans his staff back against his shoulder, reaches down, and pulls out the censer. And he places it on each side of your shoulder. You will be my champion into the wilds, Clovis, Clovis Alwareth. There is a creature deep in the forest bordering our city. With my blessing, you will be able to bypass the quarantine. Go into the forest, kill the creature, and return to me, and you will have freed my city. Uh, um, my lord, surely there's another... I'm... You see, I'm a, more of a scholar, really. Um, I've, wrote, I've written this book, um, and I, I just think maybe... So they gave me this shield, and there's someone, so is there someone else who could maybe could do this, and I, I, could, I could accompany them, perhaps, and I, I could write it down? Would that... He smiles at you and says, Be brave, my son. You see, and the mist really not... fades away, and the sound of the bar returns. Ovis? <laughs> um. <clears throat> Sorry, that was. Uh, um. <clears throat> Hello. Um. Uh, I'm sorry. We've met before, but I don't. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Brought you to and from Falcon Watch to see the uh, to see my bosses. Yes, that was Bosric. Bosric, come. Bosric, of of course. Just an incredibly like limp <laughs> grasp on your hand. Oh no. <laughs> uh, the, and Bosric has shaken. Hey, a little look in your eye for a moment. Oh yes, that was um. Um, the ale. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, what what are you doing here? I um, I mean here right in, right now having a drink because you know you still at the front, but uh, um. <sighs> And and Thomas, it's it's been a long month, really. Yes, it's um certainly certainly been strange on these parts recently. I'm I'm guessing there's a lot of guard stuff go, going on. 
Yeah, they press us into working where we can. Of course, the higher-ups aren't too thrilled with it, but what are we here for if not to help keep the peace? Right. I, oh, sorry. I, I'm going to... Hold on. So... Of, I, don't, I don't do this very much. Continue. The whole going outside, sort of socializing uh, thing. I recall that, actually. Uh... Oh, what are you? What are you up and about here? I thought you'd be safe in the temple, with, you know, book in hand and not a care in the world. Well, that was the goal for uh, for the evening, but you know, um, sometimes work is um, a bitch. So we're going to um... that is. We're going to put a pause on this really quickly, um, and we're going to return to the outskirts of the city, uh, because Quedon has been sitting for far too long in his prayers. And at this moment, um, the uh, gravekeeper walks up and just very gently raps on your door. Quedon. You all right, lad? Am I all right? Are you? You've just been praying for a while. Uh, nothing cool. strange has happened so far. Great. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I sort of just let myself lure into a trance of of past memories. Um, but as I've been thinking, I, I do want. I I have had you know something I I've, I've wanted to do for sure. Uh, Without making any kind of like acknowledgement that I've heard him, I do just like open op like the first thing he sees in response to that question is just me popping up. Um, yes, well, I suppose it's all right as one can find themselves in these times for the city. Um, Zandril, I I I do want to thank you for. Your um, rather abrupt hosting. I know that I cannot be the most gracious of guests. Uh, it's, it's no worry, lad. Uh, any servant of Zarakus is welcome in my home. And as yeah. he says that, you can kind of see over his head, mostly because you're tall. But also, just your eyes kind of wander a little bit. And standing... At the top of the stairs, kind of leaned against the wall, arms crossed, no smile, completely straight-faced. You see a being you have met before. They look elvish to the untrained, but you know better. You recognize the long gray hair, the sharp upper and lower canines, and the long fingernails of the Grey Walker as they begin to drum their fingers on their arms, staring into your soul. Um. Am I... Uh... What is... Our, our, is, uh... Is is Zandril frozen right now? He's he's still. Nope. Uh, Zandril, could could you excuse me for <clears throat> for a moment? I um uh. Can you just find somewhere else to be? Uh, <laughs> it's my bloody house, but I, I just so. I understand. I I. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to the pub, have myself a drink. You can join me after. Make sure you bring your cloak. Keep yourself safe. I, um... I... You when's the last the time I've seen this figure? Um, the last... You have seen this figure around probably about... Uh, you used to see them about once a week, just kind of, like, lingering at the okay. edge of your view. But since the, um, the mists descended, you haven't seen them at all. So it's been over a month since you've seen them. 
I um I have some well I, it seems I have some important business to attend to. Well Night shelter you friend. What? And to you. And he walks off. And as he walks past the Grey Walker, the Grey Walker just kind of watches him go. You won't survive the night, Caden. You know this as well as I do. He's been a I loyal do. servant, but his time has come. What am I to do? Is... Is there anything to do? Death hangs heavy on this city, Eden. But there is something deeper at work here. Something darker. You will hear its call, and when you do, my master bids you follow it. You <sighs> must carve out the rot that festers below this city. I'm... I must. I must. Um... Uh, how, when, when will I know? I, I haven't seen you in... Uh, I haven't received a, a, any guidance. I've... You... You know what my... I, you know what my reputation is. Nothing's been easy. I, this, you expect me to just... Of course. <clears throat> yes, of course. you would know. And as he starts to talk, he starts to walk towards you. And as he does, his image grows larger. And you can see the light starting to diminish as he walks. And the darkness wraps around him. You would know all about easy, wouldn't you, Quedin Zinask? Need you have another reminder of your crime? No. I shall never search for the easy way out again. Never. <clears throat> whatever, whatever he bids, I am but a servant. <sighs> you would do well to remember that, Quedon. And as his voice softens, the lights begin to come back. Oh. Uh, great. Um. Wow. F fantastic. Can I can I look out how how far out has uh, has Zandril gotten in that time? Um. So you see Zandril. Um, he's made it probably about thirty feet from the door, <laughs> and you actually see Zandril stop walking, kind of waver on his feet, and then collapse to the side on the ground. Is one reminder not enough? And I rush to his aid. Uh, can I make some kind of... Some kind of medicine check? Some kind of... Yeah. Um, as you run, you hear kind of an ethereal voice in the head. My master is not without mercy, Quiden. His death was quick. And your service has been remembered. No. I impossibly quick that was how <sighs> thank you for your hospitality O high priest you have done me and the people of your city well even for all those who choose not to recognize it um, and as, I, I say a prayer. As you say that, you feel a gentle hand on your shoulder. And where you look to think to see the Grey Walker, you now see a younger elvish man with long black hair. And his eyes are completely white. And he says, I do not send my servants to frighten you, child. Merely to remind you of your place. You have done good service to me. As he 
how do you now recognize as the physical form of your god, Zarakus, the god of death? He leans down and very gently picks up the body of Xandral and says, He has a place among the great poor. My service, his service to me, will not be forgotten. His service is not done. We shall all find our place to it is an honor to consider myself a servant to you, O oh, Great One. He nods his head. If you understand our place, and for what it is worth, I am sorry for the position you find yourself in. Do this service for me. Yes, this. And your balance is righted. I will be paying off that balance for the rest of my days. But if that is what you say, I shall promote. This this calling, this... What... What do you have me do? The mist blocks even my senses, my son. Something deeper in the forest. Something that goes against our laws. Find it. Carve it out. The aura of death is always stronger there. Well, my senses have been clouded in the last month. I will do as you wish. <clears throat> you will not be alone. But now I must lead you to your place. And as the elf turns to walk, a brief moment of moonlight illuminates him. And you could swear just at the edge of your vision, you see another smaller elven woman with braided white hair. Gently put a hand on his back. And then the three figures vanish into the night. Jolly old night. <sighs> I, um, I suppose I must gather my things, and I've, I've been instructed that I cannot do it alone, which is a minor disappointment. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Am I, am I expected to, I mean, I, I suppose I'm just going to gather my things, and my only words were just further into the forest. Um, I, yeah. Yeah, I, if I, if I was told that I would be accompanied, I wouldn't necessarily want to, well, my, my, my inner self certainly wants to. To wage in alone, but not if not if that is not if that is what he wishes of me. So I will gather gather my things, uh, what things remain back at the shack, and pay pay my respects, grab whatever supplies there is, and, and prepare. Is this this is night? I suppose. Yes. Yeah, I will. These scenes, just so you know, are a bit anachronistic. They are technically all happening at the same time, so it is all going to converge to a single point. Cool. Um, I I suppose I will just do do my get do my best to, to get some. I want to say rest, but I like whatever I can manage after that. I he's. 
very visibly shaken. Um, and just going to, yeah, just take, t take a couple drinks and, and just take it all in and um, be, be seeped in memories that I wish not to be thinking of and yet always are in the front of my mind. Okay. We are going to take ourselves back to the Flying Cloud Inn, but not inside just yet. Gathering in an alley to the back where they know there to be a secret entrance to the wine cellar, which can take them to the guest rooms with very little difficulty, we find our four horsemen. So, I imagine, um, well, Gwen, I think you be lookout, which I know you hate, but we're not supposed to, like, harm anybody, so I'd say you have to be lookout here in the alley. Um, sure, no fun. I know, I know. Um, Leif. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure, actually. We'll probably need some, some distraction. One of you could go inside. No, it goes. I'm the one going in the rooms. Um... At this point, um, sorry, uh, Mainland steps up. I, I can't climb with these feet. I'll, I'll go inside. I'll make a distraction. I'm, and she uh, snaps her fingers and casts um, Disguise Self. Um, still looks very much like a centaur, but not herself. Um, Lace says, nice. I, I, I guess I'll go with you. I can I can get up the stairs quietly. I've been working on it. Yeah. I, I have a new trick. Watch. Okay. And she uh, claps her hands together and then spreads them out really fast, and you see a little, like, bubble of energy as she casts yeah. Passive Without a Trace on all of you. Wow. Yeah, no, you're sticking with me. Okay. Um, and then, well, so... I look through the window. Uh, I'm pretty sure that guy with the, I don't know, with the weird shield thing, maybe, is our guy. And he seems like a dork. So we're looking for the room that looks like it's owned by a dork, okay? Um, <laughs> Does that work? Gwen looks in and says, Oh, no, we've robbed him before. You know Mama doesn't like when we rob the same people twice. I think it's him. And she points with one of her really nasty-looking daggers at the merchant that kind of burst in in the long, like, red and gold coat and says, Look at that man. He probably leaks wealth. You get a lot of stuff off of him. And also, look at the poor dear. Oh, he looks so uncomfortable shaking that orc's hand. I would feel bad robbing him. <laughs> and she oh. laughs in that sadistic way that she does. I... I've seen that orc before. This is going to be more challenging than initially anticipated. And Azir kind of steps <laughs> back and, and like rubs her hands off on her, her shorts and is like, that's, I mean, that's those Vermilion guys, right? Well, yeah, but we've we also them. robbed them before. So if we're going off of the whole rob someone twice deal, then that doesn't make any sense. Well, I mean, you're the leader, Z. We'll go where you go. This is Leif talking now. Let's, um... Let's play a game. I'm thinking of a number of rooms that we could break into within a five-minute span. Somewhere between one and five. Uh, well, Z, you're, you're fast. I mean, you could do... Three, and I, I could do the other two, if you're okay going by yourself. Which the sum of is? Five. Yes, we're doing five rooms. We're going to steal from everybody. Why not? We haven't done this in a while, right? May as well. 
I hope Mama doesn't mind. I mean, that's going to draw a lot of attention. We need to be careful. Yeah, but I feel like it's easier to... Listen, okay, I, I'm the brains, right? Here's my thought process. If we go in and just steal from one person, it's a targeted attack. But if we go in and we steal from everybody, we're just an opportunistic petty thief. Does that make sense? Sorry, microphone. <laughs> yeah, that that's okay. And then at this point, uh, Gwen walks up to Leif and, like, one finger at a time, puts her hand on Leif's shoulder. Besides, darling, what Ma doesn't know doesn't hurt her, does it? Correct. And correct, Leif correct. just kind of, like, withers from Gwen's fingers. Um, you get the idea that when you're not around Z, Gwen's kind of a bully. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, okay? You don't become the best, most well-known thieving group in the city by just doing what mom says, okay? There's a reason why I am the most skilled thief in the entirety of Tannis, all right? We've got a 100% track record. We've never had any issues. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> I know Schwarm's losing it over there. <laughs> so this is going to go great. Okay. We have to get our skills. I mean, the mist is going to make it harder and harder to have good opportunities. So we're going to have to up our game. I think this is a good opportunity to test our skills. We've got, we've got this bubble pass thing, right? You're right. You're right. We got this. Let's do it. Cloak up. And, uh... Zero will take everybody's cloaks out of the big bag and we'll go into horseman mode. All right. Uh, Mainland does not put hers on. Yeah. Theirs. I'm sure if we... Yeah. Who's to say? <laughs> his. Okay. Mainland does not put his on. Whatever pronouns. I, w I, went, and, I went and checked. Um, Perfect. So, yes. <laughs> DMs always have your notes open so you can check this. <laughs> <laughs> Useful in many walks of life, really. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, yes, so uh, Mainlin makes his way around. Um, and so while you guys go into the back, uh, Clovis and Bosric, as you were having your conversation, uh, the door pushes open. Again, it doesn't burst open this time. And a handsome centaur noble that you haven't seen around the city before, but, you know, dressed in finery. Walks in, hello, hello, all. I'm just looking for a drink. I hope all of you are well. Does he expect us to answer that? That's... It's a question, isn't it? Right. Um, I don't want to, so I'm not going to. I don't frankly want to either, so... Oh, so he doesn't make uh, something up. You drink this all the time. Well, yes, because I like it. If you don't like it, drink something oh, else. Goodness. <clears throat> yeah, they have choices. Yeah, yeah. So, right. Sorry about that. I just, I didn't know what to get, because I, I, so I just asked for what you had, well, and it, it wasn't, it's <clears> just, <throat> anyway. Well, what do you like to drink? Um, water... All right, get water then. <laughs> it's a bar. You got choices. Um, barman, I'll take a water. Thank well you. then, lad, and he uh, makes you a tankard of water. Um, while we're doing this, uh, Zier, can you go ahead and roll a stealth check for me? Yeah. And I'm getting plus 10. Correct. Great. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I rolled a 2. Total of 8. So <laughs> 18. I get plus 10 for 18. All right. Uh, <laughs> Thank yeah, you... goodness for that. <laughs> You're pretty sure you are stealthed um, as you and Leif make your way up the stairs. Um, 
and of the three rooms you are tasked to rob, two of them are unlocked. So it is a simple smash and grab. You get some jewels, you get some water, and we're going to go back downstairs. So, uh, Alzer, are you familiar with the woods around town? I mean, not especially. Um, but why? Oh, you know, just curious. Um, Is this a cleric thing? You had, you had that, that wacky look that I sometimes see, you know, when the higher-ups are talking to people. Yeah, it's a, um, <clears throat> it's a, a bit of a, a cleric-y thing. Um, so I just, you know, I'm not really a outdoorsy kind of guy, and um, so I was just wondering if you knew anything about that stuff is strong. Um, <clears throat> about the woods. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> uh, well, these specific woods... No. I mean, obviously, when we're on the road, we got a camp, so I know about woods in general, but I don't know specifically about these woods. What's, uh, what's the concern? Oh, you know, um, just sort of got a mission from, uh, higher up. No, I don't. Um, That's why I asked. <laughs> fair, okay. uh, fair enough. Mission to do? Got to go. There's uh, some sort of um, uh, mon monster -y sort of thing out there, and um, I've got to go deal with it. Um, you not really my you thing. And his, t his tusks become uh, just a tad bit more prominent. Deal with it in a martial way, dare I ask, a lethal way, because that's, that I know a great deal about. Um, I, yes, I'm pretty sure I've got to hit it on the head until it dies. So, as he says that, you hear, hit it on the head until it dies, as if your head had been plunged underwater, Pazra that kind of way that voice fades out. And another voice that no one else seems to be reacting to begins to play in your head. Osric Carl, do you miss her? Do you miss your sister? <laughs> What would you give to see her again? Would you do me a service? Answer the question, my boy. What would you give to see her again? Shop and steal. Now, my dear boy, there's no need for that. I can give her back to you. I know who took her. And all you have to do Spree. is keep Clovis safe. Cool. Can you do that for me, Bosric? <laughs> Spoilers, my boy. Yes or no? I kept him alive once. I can do it again. Good boy. And the sounds of the tavern fade back in. Now, Clovis. That did not happen in the way your vision did, where he zoned out. You heard all of that. 
At least, Osric's half of that. Not the voice in his head. I think I just got a message from the higher-ups. Or the lower-downs. One of the two. Stomach's playing games. <clears throat> Didn't respond in the way that I ever do to, um... Well, I'm not a religious man. Fair enough. So anyway, about the woods, there's like... Is it trees the whole way in? I suppose we're gonna find out, aren't we? Because I'm now very much in the mood to kill something. Oh, Christ. Don't worry. I've apparently got a divine mandate to keep you alive. So, at the very least, you're going to walk away from this. That's... reassuring? Hey, you walked away when then four horsemen goons came after us, didn't you? True, but I did have a comfortable little box to sit in that whole time while you guys did the fighting out on the... So, it's also very do I get a box that this time as well? True. You get over six feet of half orc to stand between you and it. Wonderful. Uh, can you do like sort of most of the fighting, and then I'll just come in and bonk it on the head at the end? Oh, you know what? That that fun. That works perfect. I I like this plan more and more with uh, each passing moment. So as this conversation is happening, we move back outside of... into the alleys, where Mazura sits with his horrifying goat. And his goat, best goat. That goat needs goat a name. Chat, get on that. <laughs> clicks its head. tries to speak to you, but comes to me. Is it from your realm? to your fear. It speaks to your nightmares. What doesn't these days? What does it say? one who would sit who would put a crown on your head well I did say you always have good news didn't I you are to be spared and you are to go into the woods and you are to follow the path of the black wolf That is the message. Do you know the way? It twitches its head again. The path of the black wolf is all I know. But all you the know black is the wolf imp will reveal itself to us. Is it one of you, or is it something else? The message is unclear. Now, Missouri, you know that this probably isn't what it is, because why would this person want anything to do with you? But the god of death manifests itself as a giant black wolf. Uh, knowing that, I'll uh, say to, um, at time, unnamed goat, um, <clears throat> Well, we have sent more than a few people that one's way, haven't we? Mm, perhaps. 
perhaps. This voice is deeper. Not in pitch, in location. This one is curious. We go now. This one wants to know why it calls to us. One moment, and I'll reach uh, into right underneath into my, my pockets and pull out a piece of cloth. Um, when I drape it over the goat's head, it looks like it's actually been cut for the goat to hide some of the uh, interesting features that it possesses um, outside of the horns and go, well, I was going to ask if you could move through the street without drawing attention, but since you want to know, we'll have to hide you a bit. And I will climb onto um, his back. Hold on, wait a second. His. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll say, do you want to drink before we go, or should we uh, head straight off? He does not respond and just starts running. I'll just quickly grab, um, actually at the speed immediately, I'll just wrap my chain like from my belt and just around the uh, the horns and to secure myself. Say, so, oh, I guess we're not going to use stealth on this one. And uh, we'll just trump it right, right along the path. <laughs> okay. Um, so Zir, up above, you have finished the third room. And you meet up with Leif, who has bags and bags of jewels and gold. And says, I, I think we did good, Z. Yeah, I would say so. Can, can we go to Mama now? Uh, I'm starting to feel a little tired. Oh. Um. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Okay. I can carry one of those. Is it the weight, or...? I'm okay. And Leif uh, makes their way down. You're not... You're not sick or anything, are you? I don't think so. Just tired? Yeah. That's probably okay. all it is. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And I'll, and I'll grab... I said I was going to grab a bag, but I would actually just, like grab all of them from from them if I could. Mm -hmm. It's pretty heavy, so you're not going to be able to carry all of it. I would carry as much as I physically yeah. can. Yeah. Because I, you can see the, the gears are turning in Zir's head and she's stressed. <laughs> um, okay, so you guys make your way out. Um, Gwen is waiting, just kind of throwing the dagger up in the air. Oh, it took you all long enough. You are just such a good lookout, you know? <laughs> and Zir slaps her on the back, like, a little too hard. Like, she, you're awesome <laughs> at what you do. jolts forward and then puts two fingers to her head, which she recognizes her messaging um, mainland. So yeah. she'll meet us, or he'll meet us at the usual spot. Let's go. Okay. And Leif just nods and starts running. And then... Um, starts to, as you're running, move behind you a little bit. And you notice that it's starting to lose a lot of speed. And then stops and kind of puts the coins to the side. And says, Z? Uh, y yeah? Z, I don't... <laughs> and with a terrible sound, black oozing blood leaks out of Leif's ears and eyes as it as he coughs. They cough a terrible black gout of black blood all over themselves, and they begin to vomit this terrible black fluid. <laughs> see, see, I'm scared. <laughs> uh it's, um, uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, and, and Zir will shove, like, all of the bags in Gwen's direction and, um, against better judgment, uh, try to, well, <laughs> Leif's large, 
<laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, I mean, she's gonna helplessly kind of try to try to lift Leif up, kind of put a put a hand under arm or something, and um, it, it's okay. Mom, mom will know what to do. We have to get out of here. Uh, um, in a you, moment. You're okay. In a moment of surprising compassion, Gwen throws the gold to the side and picks up Leif's other arm. Says, we'll come back for it. Let's get you home. Come on. Yeah, here. Um, And Zero will really quickly kind of find, like, I think at this point she's pinpoint, like, every point along the road, like, little stash opportunities. So I think she'll she'll kick it somewhere to conceal it and put it away. And, um, let's go. Um, Where's... So you start mainland you could ride on them you start to move and Leif says see I I can't I can't I can't and you feel the weight get really light really fast and you look at Leif's arm draped over your shoulder and it withers and oh. then it sloughs off onto the ground and there is just bone remaining Gwen, go home. I, I, I'm not leaving, you see. Gwen, go home. You need to meet up with Mainland. You need to let Mom know what happened. Okay, I'm going to stay right here. Go home. I, 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 I... Gwen just nods and runs off. I'll kind of gently let let the weight kind of rest on the pavement, and um, I'll sit next to Leif, just like brushing my hand uh, through their hair. Um, I don't, I don't know how to heal. Uh, um, my. stay right here, Leif. Stay right here, and Zero's going to start running back towards um, the, the cloud. Okay. So as you're running, you hear a voice in your head. My, my, what a good sister you are. To stay in the face of such horrors. Do you love her, Zero? Of course, I don't, I don't have time for this. <laughs> and you Zier's want like, her back, Zier. She's not. She's you. not gone yet, and and Zier's running as fast as she can. Oh my dear, you're smarter than that. What is a body with no breath, no organs to pump the blood? She is bones, and you know it as well as I. There is, there are people capable of of, of powerful magic. I've I've heard that at, I've heard that you can revive people sometimes. I mean, I mean, someone and I, hopefully by this point you're just kind of getting close to the cloud and shoot burst the door open and just. Mm -hmm. I, I know at least one of you is a cleric, and I need your help. <laughs> And at this, she would have thrown off her cloak at some point yeah. <laughs> along her run. <laughs> Please, it's urgent. <laughs> um, I'm. Hello. Hi, come with me. <laughs> and Zir will will run in and just what? grab your hand. God, <laughs> Boss will definitely be the shadow he's now apparently supposed to be. Um, as you're running out, the affluent merchant says, Now wait a moment, I bet the door just slams as you all run out. Um, Mainland, in disguise, sees you, clocks that you're not okay, and runs out one of the side doors. I, if I catch sight of her while I'm kind of in this hazy run, I'll just, I'll mouth go home. Or, like, if I have a signal of, like... I, I assume we would have signals at this point. Like, mm -hmm. whatever our signal would be for, like, bail. Like, go I mean, you also have Thieves yeah. Cant, so... Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. what I would say. Mm -hmm. Great. 
Uh, yeah, and I'm just running. <laughs> I'm just running Clovis and Bosric along. Hello, scruffy child. Where are we going? Listen, um, I stole your shit. I'm gonna give it back as payment. Um, my friend what? is really hurt. I... That's the part you should pay attention to. The friend is hurt thing. What? Clovis. You're not gonna get anything else from her right now, mate. Just, just see what she needs. Yeah, she's All got right. she's got yeah. tears in her. You can tell she's really, really fighting it, but she has some tears in her eyes. So you run back to the spot where you left Lake, and there is no body. There is no skeleton. There is a puddle of black ooze. Oh. You have... Oh, I'm so sorry. You can fix this, right? Okay. <laughs> and she turns and looks at Clovis like... <laughs> it, it, he certainly can't. I don't know of anyone who can. They haven't. Friend, I don't know anybody who would even know where to begin. Uh, but, I mean, I would were, be happy to fine. help you, child. And a figure walks out. I... I told you already that I would. And now you have friends who will be willing to keep you Can safe. Can we see this person? Yes. Hand of my sword. Oh, now there's no need for that. I, I already told you I was going to go figure something out. I don't, I don't know who you are. For now, I'm a friend, and the only one in this city capable of bringing your sister back from that. And as she points, you see that her hands are armored. Uh, the head is hooded. You can't see a face. You can just see the lower half of a, of a feminine face. No eyes or anything. But you do see something unique around her neck. Uh, you see a holy pendant. It is the pendant of what appears to be a solar with six wings and six arms. Mm. Two of the wings look demonic, two of them look angelic, and two of them look skeletal. Mm. The angelic arms point to the sky with two hands, an eye on each one. The skeletal wings are at the center with two hands that cover the figure's eyes. And the demonic wings are down, with two clawed hands. Um. Okay. What, I mean, what can you offer? Do we all see the pendant? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do I, does it look familiar at all? You've never seen it before. In all of your studies, you've never seen this before. Okay. Um, uh, Clovis is going to put a hand on Zir's shoulder and cast uh, protection from good and evil okay. uh, and say, Scruffy child, listen, you shouldn't... People who offer you things that walk out of the mist in a dark alleyway, this is not a good idea. Okay. Out of curiosity, is that the same <laughs> voice I heard in my head coming from this person? It is? Zir, Zir basically just says, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. <laughs> to, to Clovis and, like, doesn't even make eye contact. <laughs> like, I am the person from the alley. <laughs> How dare you speak to me like that? <laughs> so what, I mean... I would give anything. Good. Then your paths are aligned with these two. There is a sickness in the woods that I would see excise. The plight is shared by all in this city, and I grow weary of it. But I am afraid my power does have limits, and while the mist remains, I can do nothing. When it recedes, I can work miracles unlike anything you've ever seen. And 
that you have my word. I... Okay. Okay. Do you, um, well, do you need me to go with these two people? Four of them, but the other two you'll leave there. Well, I have other siblings. I mean, I can't just... My mom... Your siblings are weak, Zia. You've always been the strongest. And when Gwen returns to where you're from, she will find your mother is not well either. It's okay, I don't. Cough. I don't trust this. I don't trust this. And and Zir starts taking a step away. That wouldn't happen. Who even no. are you? What is that thing around your neck? Oh, I am a servant. A servant of the threefold path. Do I know what that is? You do not. And more importantly, Clovis, you don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, I think hearing something vaguely religious that he does not understand. Uh, Clovis is going to squint his eyes and, and reach for his shield. Scruffy child, I think it's a good idea that we get going. I... You may have referred to me as death. I am no child. <laughs> Scruffy death, I think we should get going. Uh... You're wise to listen to him. My power does have limits, and... Resurrection magic gets weaker the more time passes. It is not on your side. Me? I couldn't hear you there for a second. Oh, I was quiet. <laughs> Can you help my mom? Yes. Wait, how do you know who my mom is? I let's leave. <laughs> and she gets mad and <laughs> storms off in a random direction. <laughs> Your mother is the Grey Matron, leader of the Black Alley District, better known to those who know her as Kellebeck the Rat. Am okay, I wrong? Okay, so you don't just say those things in front of people. <laughs> how else can death. I prove Are to you, you that I'm a criminal? No. Well, I did say I stole your stuff. I don't know why that wasn't already an assumption. Um, <sighs> there was a lot of things happening in the moment. Fair. I Fair had enough. to prove to you that I am speaking truth. I can offer you nothing other than that. Fine. Okay. I will go on, what, a quest? What is this? Where are we? We're going into a forest? Yes. What, you're, <clears throat> sorry, you're coming with me? With me? That's what this crazy lady said, who knows my mom. I'm sorry, but I don't know this crazy lady who knows your mom. And Neither do I, but she knows my mom. <laughs> That's wonderful. I've not extended a formal invitation for you to join me on my God-given quest. Oh, so you also have spoken to some strange person? No. It was a turtle with a city on his back. That's perfectly normal. This okay. alley shenanigans? I'm uh -huh. not sure what this is all about. Yeah. Great. Uh-huh. And what about this bozo that I beat up once before, huh? <laughs> and I'll point I'll point to Bostrick. <laughs> Bostrick who writes pretty unless you are you know unless you're good enough to fight someone with a with a twenty strength. <laughs> no. Who knows who actually knows how that fight went down. But <laughs> I'm actually just gonna look down at you and go 
She did, was... not, she did not even touch you, but she made many <laughs> mean postures yeah. at you, I'm sure. <laughs> she didn't look down at you. How, how tall is Zir, incidentally? Not tall. <laughs> She's like... Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm very much looking down <laughs> at you. Like five like 5'4". Four. <laughs> Dang. Look. For what my two cents is worth, there is absolutely no way we can trust her. But I'm getting the idea we don't have a lot of choices either. That's not what you were supposed to say, Boz. You were supposed to tell this tiny, scruffy child that we need to leave, and then they need to go somewhere else. Do you have any power that can get rid of her? Um, For that matter. No? Well, I think we're stuck. I don't suppose I can ride my way out of this one. That one, and I'm pointing to the, to the, to the mysterious figure... She has the power to make it happen, whether we like it or not. I am really not in the mood to fight something that can have my guts for garters right now. Let's find out where this goes. All right. Tiny Scruffy Child, you can come with us. Death! Sorry, Tiny Scruffy Death, you can come with us. So all of you... (laughs) Make your way to the edge of the city, where you see yeah, the gravekeeper's assistant. I think by this point, like, not, like, trying to have gotten rest for, like, maybe ten minutes, uh, and just being tormented by my own thoughts, I think I have literally collected my things and just sit on the ground outside the door, like, just waiting. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I look up, and you guys, you guys see the most, like, sunken, like, misshapen, you know, giant scars on his face. Just, like, look up and just go, friends? Enemies. <laughs> they always keep it so dreadfully dark in this part. Of- ah! Sorry, oh! it's just everything about you is scary. Yeah, yeah, that uh, typical. That uh, right. well, I get that a lot. That. Hello, Bosric Cub. Nice to meet you. Oh, uh, that's too much. I'm. I you like t- 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 you reach out your hand and I. I'm, okay, okay. Uh, that one. Yes, I'm Clovis. Yeah. I'm not going to touch you. I appreciate that. Not because you're bad. It just I don't want to do that. Right. That mm, yes. I, t- I uh, I seem to have only been touched by uh, well rocks in the last month that I point to the large pile of rocks in front of a broken window. Are you should have let us know. We could have done something about that. Missouri, you are here as well. By the way, you're kind of luring, lurking in the shadows. You can show up whenever you want. <laughs> Who am I to trust? Well, I deal in death. It's uh, not always the most. Uh, well, it's just a thankless profession. Are what? you guys all in the middle of the road? All the same. <clears throat> they would currently be standing in the cemetery. Oh. Well, okay, thank step. you. I, uh, well, let's just say I got a message from on high that I would be expecting some uh, guests of the more friendly variety tonight. Can or I at least guests... At least yeah, guess that inside. align guess that align with the same purpose as I. This sucks. This sucks so much. And Zir's just gonna like finally have like a tantrum <laughs> hearing another person who's been spoken to by God. <laughs> She's just gonna storm in random directions in the cemetery, like kicking at rocks. <laughs> Look, I, I, I presume I that not <laughs> Good vibes. <laughs> Immaculate well, vibes. Immaculate vibes. <laughs> I, I didn't rather ask for this myself. But what was your name? Well, you've got like a death thing going on, and I've got a death thing going on. How yes. long has your death thing been going on? Because that's going to change my answer. I respect seniority. So. Since, uh, since I was a boy. That 
Um, not, was that not specific enough for you? <laughs> nope. I, no. <laughs> well, uh, you can take call it, me you little boy now. You can call me Scruffy Thing, like this guy does. How about that? Is that what you wish to be called? No. I don't think I would find much pleasure in calling you that. Wow, someone it's has manners. <laughs> and I'll like, I'll, like stare daggers at Clovis. Like, <laughs> uh, given that they're in the the graveyard, just yelling um, <laughs> ridiculously. <laughs> I'm just all the heal is the, the clop of the goat as I start to ride down the road. I have no reason to interject myself into foolishness. <laughs> Are you, by any chance, a member of the cloth? Yes. Sorry, floor man. Yeah, I've I've gotten up. I, I suppose my destiny is to be floor man. I well, not a not a bad legacy to keep. Um. I no. Well, no. Sorry, you said you received a vision from on high. I yes. assumed you were a, of the clerical variety. Oh Sorry. yes, that I am. That I am. So let me interject really quick. Um, as you're walking, Missouri, or you're riding on your goat, you look over to this group, and from the tall furbold seems to appear out of his shadow. You see a giant black wolf with white eyes. Staring at you. Uh, as soon as I hear hoof prints, I will turn my head to look at Azura. So, uh, Bosrek, as you uh, look, you will see this uh, the face covered on this four horned goat. And y you'll see me start to ride by, look at you, and quickly we turn and we're barreling straight towards you. Uh, is that opposed to athletics I'm taking? I'm not, I'm not. I'm not charging you. I'm. I'm. I'm charging towards you. Well, I'm, oh. I will not kill you at this time. <laughs> so you're planning to charge and then stop right in front of me. Um, depends on if you just stand there or not. <laughs> let's let's play this uh, yes, by ear. I, I think the delirium has now finally caught up with Vaz, and the goat charging him has made him suddenly go, huh? Huh? What the? Oh! So I'm mean, effectively not moving. I'm just. Oh. I will stop. I sit back down on the, the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I will stop, and uh, I I will inform the dun uh, I will inform the DM if I speak to because uh, we never decided the uh, language. I would be speaking to my goat, if anything, in Sylvan, and uh, that was that would be the language I would give it. Okay. Um. I would sit there and just as now I'm just staring directly. Bosrek, it feels like I'm staring at you, slightly off to the side. I'm staring at the side that has the wolf, and all I'm going to say is, "You can go now." Um. So the wolf, uh, the wolf was behind Queden. Oh, it's behind Queden. Yeah. Oh, so then I'm charging at Queden actually. <laughs> oh, lovely. Which is probably worse. Actually, <laughs> lovely. Lovely. About. I, uh, yeah, in that case, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a bit more than just sitting down and taking it. Um, yeah, I, uh, well, question for the DM, I would know, would I, would I, I, I believe I would have a passing knowledge of Sylvan. Uh, You'd know from, Sylvan, yeah. Yeah, from the, uh, from, from, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I haven't yeah. spoken. To, that be said, I had not spoken to the goat yet in front of you. Cool, cool. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm like. I, I. I like clutch around myself, and I just like in the most awkward manner. Like I. I take several just big steps in the other direction. Like. Uh. Hello. This is profoundly normal. Uh, come with the same calling as the rest of us. Uh, the goat, when you say you can go, just clicks. Um, and well, what I'll say is he. Smoke. I will say he changes his um his thing to uh you got the same calling. Um, so you know we'll we'll have to I'll have to respond to that. Who spoke to you? And now I'm staring, not looking at the wolf. I'm staring directly into your eyes. Now, this is the first time you somebody's been close enough to see. Um, 
I, I look very human, including complexion. My eyes under my hood are completely black. There is no white to my eyes. And I, who did you speak to? Who? Oh. Personally, um, my um, clerical duties to the god of death. And we, in fact, have not spoken to the same entity. And I will now shoot my gaze to the wolf and say, you can go now. I'll follow. The wolf kind of cocks its head. And it says to you in Sylvan, You do not speak for me, fear boy. Am I hearing any of this? Yes, you do. But only the two of you hear this. Great. I'm, I presume I'm following the eye line to absolutely nothing? Yes. Yeah. Boss, there's a weird tension going on here, and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to make of it. Oh, you did not call. One. And I'm speaking to the wolf. You called on me. You did not speak of another. If you do anything else or want anything else, they will be party to it. I gave you no call. I will remind you, just, just for clarification, Mazora, the <laughs> message that you got was not from the wolf. It was follow the wolf. Follow the wolf. Yeah, okay. So, as I, I was, now I'll change uh I was called to follow you, but I was not told that others would be here. If anything is needed, then we would have to be away from them. And again, all of this is in Sylvan. In Sylvan, perhaps surprising Missouri. Death follows us all, new friend. Now they're communicating. I hate it here! But, <laughs> but I knew so I should have knew taken Sylvan in college. <laughs> I, I, will, I will respond first Damn and say, it. death doesn't follow us all closely enough. That would be a blessing. And I will turn towards uh, Zir, who is... Zir actually being... also knows Sylvan, by the way. <laughs> who, who, so um, if you speak geez. out loud and she hears Sylvan, so she's like... I'm speaking, oh. I'm speaking out loud. And I will look, and I will look at... Um, Zier and go, ah, oh, the young one's here. Where are the rest? And I say that in actually common. The young one is here. Where are the rest? It, I, I, just to, I just told I would be meeting a group. I, I, I don't, I, I never received a specific count. Shooting seems... my eyes back in your direction. I was not told of a group, so it seems like we are getting conflicting information. You've all been talking to Stendar as well? What is this, like, sort of communication that you've got going on? Stendar, goodness, no. <laughs> oh. um. Tonight, a, uh... Absolutely sure it was Stendar you talked to. Um, yeah, there's only one turtle with a city on his back, my friend. That there is a um, fair enough. A man who I'm just stroking my goatee, like at your guys' conversation. Like, of my, I've gone from kind of intense uh, focus to utter confusion, probably a little pity. Um, well. For me, um, a a man who very graciously uh, gifted to me his hospitality has passed on tonight, suddenly, and with very little warning. It is oft my job to deal with the passage between the living and the dead, but... Such is a job I have been partaking in quite more frequently than usual this past month. I received a vision Truth. from Zarakis himself that 
whatever role I have to play in ending this would seemingly involve all of you. So here I sit in well, the most social interaction I have had in quite some time. When you mentioned that someone you knew passed away very recently, Zir would cease her tantrum. She's still standing away from the group a little bit, but she's not kicking rocks and angrily <laughs> screaming about anymore. Well, I will disclose a little. I commune with those that uh, realm behind the eyes when they're closed. And they told me to follow a wolf that is over your shoulder. It is clear so, that, that many voices from the beyond seem to be calling us all together. In Sylvan, back to my goat. Keep an eye behind us. Don't let anyone sneak up, if you please. <laughs> so, when we left our adventures, they were meeting for the first time in the graveyard of Tannis. Good place to start a horror story, if I do say so myself. <laughs> So, you may continue with your speech, or you may make your way into the forest that you can see on the edges of Tannis. I just told my goat to keep a, an eye out and turn around um, where the rest of you called in some similar fashion. Something in wants us in that forest. What? Yes. I'm not sure. It could all be the same thing, pretending to be different things. It could be different things for different reasons. Bottom line, there's a forest. Something wants us out there. Good, good summation? I don't One know question. why Stendar sent me to all of you, but um, seems like we're in this together. <laughs> he most certainly did not send you to me. Um, or is there but I do have eye to you. I do have one question, and I will look right at Zir. Where are your others? They're not coming. Will you be okay with that? Wait, who are you even talking about? And she, reali <laughs> she realizes her cloak's off, so she's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not even sure what you mean, actually. Well, four ride, and one stands before me. Are there more oh. scruffy children that you consort with? Um. Um. Oddly, at his uh, comment, I will look and give him a stare. I will have to make an intimidation roll. Okay. Can I just choose to fail? Yeah. You can always <laughs> yeah. choose to fail. I don't, I don't think you could not intimidate me. I was about to say, you may always choose um, to fail. My, 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 I, it, to you, it almost seems like my brow gets steeper and my eyes get darker. And I, as I just stare at your question, at your, your eyes at that question. I don't see any children here to you. Uh, Clovis, this stare actually awakens something in you deeper than a mere intimidation. It is... Yeah, lust. <laughs> it is a primal fear. Yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> no, it is It is a deeper fear, more primal than anything you felt, as if he is speaking with a voice older than him. Toss my book to the side and go for my shield. All right, hold on, hold on. Look, looking at Zier, you're all that you're that death one, right? That's what you said. Are we traveling together? Or are we not? Aren't we a moody bunch? I continue to stare at Clovis and go, "Do you see any children?" And it's almost think of it like kind of like almost Gandalf from uh, like Lord of the Rings when he's like, 
I am not. And you hear that kind of echo on it only to you in your fear. That question, because technically, yes, but I also don't think that's the one that you want me to say, and I don't want to say the thing you don't want me to say. Um, I will back down a little and say, and say what answer you feel will be best said in this moment. The answer that I feel would be best at this moment is to go home and never look at any of you ever again, but I don't think I'm allowed to do that one either. Oh, we're going to get along just fine. I will turn and say, um, I'll just make a clicking sound, which my goat would know this means I can't speak openly. <laughs> and be like, we must go. Apparently as a group. So I'm going to let Missouri lead, and I'm just going to hang back hang back with Clovis. Just give him, like, a, a real awkward, just a... Are you all just, following? Just... <laughs> well, well, I have one thing. Um, walking towards the goat, I am going to pass by Zier and kind of... Look her up and down. I'm actually going to try to do an insight to see if she's off based on what I've seen of her actions and mannerisms in the past. Yeah, okay. she is. Are oh, you just relenting? She something's yeah. off. Uh, am I? I, don't, I think. Well, I get. Let's go ahead and roll because I think no um, matter what, you can perceive that something's off. But she is fighting that, so I'm curious. How so much... it's insight versus deception, then. Yeah. Okay. So I have. Oh. 15 plus 3, so it's going to be an 18. Mm. Sorry, I was double-checking something. <laughs> You're all good. No worries. Um, I got a 14 on my deception. Okay, so then so I, I would read it pretty well. Yeah, yeah um, you would... Um, I, I think she's fought it back at this point, but in terms of her being off, she definitely has her guard down more than she would normally. Like, she's being pretty casual, and obviously she doesn't have her cloak on, so she's she's been caught in a weird situation where she wants to... She's around strangers, so she wants to appear cool like death, but also they've seen her without... <laughs> unfortunately, already without her disguise on, so she's um, kind of she's kind of caught in a rock and a hard place. But you can tell um, that she's kind of tear stained on the face. So there were some tears that happened earlier, but she's fought them off and is being brave right now. <laughs> all right, I will then um, motion for you towards uh, the goat and uh, whisper light, uh, lightly. Pick yourself up. A horseman needs a horse. Get on the goat. And in Sylvan, I'll say, please bear her. Her day seems to have been more trying than they usually are. Who? Uh, the goat kind of, like, looks at you with that click and makes eye contact with you, and then Zir looks to you, and this is something you've never seen before, Missouri, in your nightmares. The goat's features soften. Um, the fur that is normally kind of like matted and like coarse gets softer. The horns seem to glisten a bit, and the eyes that are sunken and bright red seem like normal goat eyes. And the goat walks up and very gently, Zir kind of just like headbutts you in the chest and then turns around so you can get on its back. Um, did only I see this lightning, or was it obvious to all of us? Well, no, nobody else would have really noticed that it was lightning because they would have just, like, they don't perceive this as anything other than a normal goat right now because of the covering on its head. Okay. Um, at seeing that, I will take the covering off, knowing and seeing that this is obviously going to be a full-fledged uh, goat, and then um, and replace the, the cloth. We'll need to talk later about... Probably a lot of things. Granted, you're not we the can... first person who's known things about me that they shouldn't have today. So I guess this is the new normal. <laughs> and Zero will uh, 
sit on the goat. And she actually she actually kind of perks up a bit for the first time so far. She I'll pull up fun. my hood again and just Shall we proceed? Who is uh the uh fearless leader of this gathering? Oh, me. <laughs> Typically. Sorry, maybe not. Um uh, that guy um, sitting on the ground seemed to know a lot. <laughs> so maybe him? <laughs> look, I for one have never met any of you a day in my life, and I'm frankly uh, shocked that you are still sticking around. So I, I, I do have experience in woods. I don't know much of the purpose of our quest, more than any of you, but if I must, I must. And I suppose I charge forward. All right. So as um, you charge forward, Forward. You walk through the woods. Now we are in not the height of summer, but we are in summer. It is the summer months now. But as you walk through the woods, you start to see snow. It's very gentle at first. And then it starts to get heavier. Can everybody roll a perception check for me? Absolutely. Does the fact that we're in the woods affect me at all? My ability um, I to think make this role. I don't. You know what? Yes, because of your specific phobias, ah. I'm going to have you roll this with disadvantage. If everybody's using digital dice, then I will as well. Roll now. No, it's fine to me. Just go ahead and announce what you roll, whether you're using digital or physical dice. Eleven. You said roll with disadvantage? Uh, not you, just Clovis. Oh. Um, okay. Uh, it'll be a six from your fearless leader. <laughs> nice! Oh, All right. So, um, Bosric, uh, Mazora, and Quedon. Snow seems normal. Seer and Clovis, you hold out your hand to let the snow fall on it. It's not cold and it doesn't melt. And as you look closer, this isn't snow. You've seen this before. At the end of autumn, or the beginning of spring, when the mushrooms start to send out their spores. But you've never seen one this big. Every single flake of snow falling is a spore. And after some time, you emerge from the woods into a snow-covered landscape and a sparse village. While everyone is soaking this in, I want to thank Asterisk VTuber for this wonderful music. He has provided all the music for this campaign, and it is incredible. Nice. Zooming out, where is this? T it's this map is massive. It is, a, it is a massive open plain with a few buildings. You do not see people anywhere. You see rundown buildings. You see one large building in the center of town, and far at the end, you see a cathedral. In front of that cathedral, you see a statue similar to the necklace that you saw on that woman's neck. Beyond that, to the far north, you see a castle on a hill, blanketed in fog. You see a lake that seems to have turned black with infectants and smog. You see another, smaller house also blanketed in fog, that just to look at it fills you with dread. And you see, or rather hear, 
the working of great machines belching smog into the air. Do I see that wolf anymore? No, you do not. The snow, it's... It's not... Um, there's... Something is... Something is, something is wrong. Snowing in summer doesn't seem very right to me. None of this does. Was any of this here a moment ago? Was... I don't know many woods that lead out to something like this. I've never seen this before. And I've been through the woods many times. Seems we've been had. This dread clouds my judgment. I... In Sylvan to the goat, does anything here speak to you? So now for the first time, all of you hear the goat respond in Sylvan. The air is thick with nightmares. We have left Wilderglade. We are in the realm of the Dread Masters. Toy to talk? Neat. Um, to the horse, how much sway do I hold here? The master who serves here is not yours. So if all of you could zoom out a little bit, I'm going to ping on the map around this location. You should see oh, a black no, circle. Yeah, you're going to have to zoom out pretty far. Sorry. I have zoomed out. I didn't out mean to make it this big. I didn't realize how big it was going to be. <laughs> um, you see people milling around, kind of slowly shambling, not quite like zombies, but aimlessly. If you could move yourselves onto the map somewhere near one of the near this building here, in whatever formation you would be, you can just drag and drop your character if you haven't used roll twenty before. I am, I'm trying to find where you've made that marking. Many pings, like fireworks yeah. in the night. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. I'm going to just drag out a generic token for um, my goat at the moment. Okay. Oh my god. I found it. Nope. Okay. Lost it again. There are pings. Yeah, Follow there's, the pings. There's currently While three everybody's... people out. And a goat. And a goat, oh, yes. I had it I'm all going. the way zoomed out, so you guys were minuscule. I see you now. Yeah. <laughs> so while they're doing that, I will tell the others, um, this is not this is not our realm. This is the realm of another. Uh, I hate this again. <laughs> and Zira, Zira starts having a tantrum again. <laughs> Worse yet, we were all we were all summoned or made to call by an entity or a power. None of those powers hold sway here. Are you still walking while you're talking, or have you stopped? I've I've stopped with them. So if they've stopped, I'm stopped. If they continue to move towards these people, then I will continue to move towards these people. So whatever masters add a thing or a yeah. token. Um. Click on your name on the sheet in Roll20 and just drag it out. Yeah, up in the top right where the chat oh. is, there's one that looks like a newspaper. It's called Journal. Your name oh, should be under I there, see. and then yeah. you can uh, click and drag it onto I the map. See. Okay, uh -huh. <laughs> there we go. Um, where is, where is oh, the so there I'm go. gonna I'm going to actually move hey. up here. And then, uh, so, so your right masters, 
Your masters hold no sway here, nor does mine. I will say again to go, um, if you wish to leave, I will not hinder you. I don't know what's going to come next. Stay. So, um, at this point, the people stop. And one of them looks up. Quite and something feels wrong to you. Something familiar about these people and the way they're moving. And one of them turns to look at you. And you see a person in scraggly clothes. Their face, they have a bearded face that goes all the way around, almost like a full goatee, but no mustache. And their mm -hmm. eyes seem vacant. And as they look at you, one of them kind of clicks its head up, starts to sniff, and then... You hear a growl in the back of its throat. And as the growl subsides, subsides, excuse me, its hands go to its side, and then it puts its hands at its face, and you hear as if through a strange, ragged throat. A sound that you have heard before. I start rapidly backing away. I'm, I'm, I am all the way. If I was leading before, I am all the way. And now, you see not only the figures all turn to see you, but out of one of the buildings, a massive creature, at least ten feet tall, carrying a hammer about the size of Bosric. Oof. growls at you, and I need everyone to roll initiative. Yes. Could, we, could we say for practicality's sake that I've dismounted at yes. some point? Okay, yeah. great. Can I ask in, in, in what direction sense. we're facing in, in, in... I forgot to select myself, but I got an 11. Okay. So the creatures, I'll, I'll are coming, creatures are coming out of this building here to the right? They uh, should be on the map. Physically. They're on the map now. There's like uh -huh. should be able to see them now. tokens over here. Yes. Ah. Oh. Many... Seventeen for me. Okay, I am opening up the initiative so I can add you guys in. Thank you. See it now. So I have Bosric with an eleven. <laughs> Go to eleven. We've got Zir here with a six. Your... We've got Clovis with a twenty. Very nice. I can run away so fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be... That's probably the plan, admittedly. <laughs> that'll be a 19 for me, Chief. All right, a 19 for you. And I'm sorry, um, Misery, if I missed yours. 17. 17. Awesome. And the goat, of course, will go right after you. Yes. All right. But I have stopped the music prematurely. I need to add in new music. Nice. New music, perhaps a dash too loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just it came on. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'll turn it down a bit. That was that was for the sake of the stream. I apologize great, for that. Great. Oh, no, it's like, true. are you afraid? No. Really, brilliantly hear. effective in that case. <laughs> what? Okay. Am I what? <laughs> and this is all by Aster. Yes. Whoa! We've been working amazing. on this for months. Yeah, this the dude's incredible. Is this your sound guy? Yes. Oh, he's awesome. He's so All cool. Right. This is great. great. So the feral lichens got a five. Mm -hmm. And their alpha got a six. So they are going at the bottom of the lineup, thankfully, because that would have been very bad for you. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Zero, you are, I'm assuming, faster than the... What's your dexterity mod? My dex mod is plus four. Then... All right. Roll a d20. Okay. Because so is his. Ooh. I don't like that. I got a 15 on the die. 
All right, I got a 19 on the die, so he will be going first. Cruel. Damn. All right. <laughs> so, uh, top of the lineup, we have Clovis. The feral lichens have noticed you and are moving towards you. You see several of them. Uh, there are four actually towards the back that, as they speak, draw out crude-looking bows and l set their arrows alight. Um, I'm going to action dash as far away from them as I can get. Okay. Uh, that is 60 feet or um, 12 squares. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys see Clovis just drop his book and run screaming. <laughs> oh. All right. So uh, Clovis nopes on out of there uh, towards the tree line again. We should um, stick together. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we need more out there. <laughs> Great. Your fear is before you. Yeah, that's Quality. sort of my question for you as I'm reviewing my spells in a mild panic with how high of an initiative roll I rolled. Am I am I operating <laughs> at any kind of handicap at the moment? Roll a wisdom save. Great. <laughs> oh no. Uh that's going to be a That's going to be a flat 10. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um you are frightened. You cannot move closer to these werewolves. <laughs> you cannot, and you have disadvantage to attack them. Great. Great. <laughs> great. <laughs> great. Um, I'm... You know what? I, I, I think he had the right idea. Uh, I'm... I'm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna... Bonus action. Uh, da, 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 da. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna bonus action. Shield of faith myself. I don't know any of you, uh, <laughs> and uh, and run as 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 far as uh, as far as my legs will get me. Okay. That's Thirty feet. Uh, so that's six squares. Yep. Uh, All right. Got to zoom so, in. Feel free um, to continue. Quieten, uh you all see that Quiden's, uh form is kind of wrapped in shadow for a moment, and then you see um, an overlay of almost like dark armor sitting on their body, and then Quiden also runs, gibbering something about not again. And that will bring us to Missouri. So I need a second to um, look at Goat and go... In or out? They are strong. We can fight them, but they are strong. That one! And the goat actually, like, rears up on its back, and one of its hooves, all of you see this, with this horrible crack, one of its hooves becomes an almost human hand with long fingernails. And it points at the giant one and says, That one is dangerous. So, at that, I'm just going to say, then go, I'll protect the others. I, leash, I, I loosen my chain, okay. and we never spoke. How big of a plume of smoke does it make? Um, it makes a 30-foot, um, a or a 25-foot square. So, like, it makes a square, um, two squares out from you, so... Um, hold on, I'll draw it on the map real quick. Thank you, sir. Uh, Vasily. That's a uh, color. Sorry. Okay. I was like, is it that gray box? Yeah. Okay, so it's two in all directions? Uh-huh. That is massive. Okay, um... So I can move thirty. Um, I'll say uh, I can. I'll all say the others is I can. I can create a small measure of time for you to prepare. Come to me, and I will move one, two, five, six. Um, I will move to here, 
And okay. then um, with the sensor, I'll just kind of snap it. It will light and smoke will begin to billow from it. And all you'll hear is um, chains, like like uh, kind of rattling against each other. And then you'll hear a... <laughs> and then the area around me, um, two in front of me, two up and everything, will be... Um, Will be quite covered in smoke, which will which will um, provide obscurement. And I will try to remember how to draw a square. Yeah, uh, but right now you guys are all obscured, so that will bring us to Bosric. Uh, the goat moves with you guys. I'll right, move so the goat. The range on crossbow is eighty, right? Yes. So I'm currently not at long range, yes. So it's with disadvantage? Mm-hmm. Great. Well, I was planning on doing this anyway. I will um, use uh, one use of Fighting Spirit to give myself okay. five temporary hit points and advantage. All right. And I will, therefore, the advantage, uh, doing the disadvantage, I will shoot the lead, uh, this guy, if it will let me do the thing. This one here? Yeah, yeah. okay, got it. With my crossbow. All right. I don't know why there was a D5 in there, or a D8. Oh, there was a damage. Yeah. Uh, uh, 22 so that hit. Will, that will hit. For uh, six damage, okay. Yeah, and then I will back up and reload. Okay. All right, that will bring us to the Lycan Alpha, who is going to move his full speed. He is going to dash forward to right here, and just kind of menace you. And that will bring us to Zier. Can Zier be dumb? I think Zier's gonna be dumb. Welcome to the club. Oh, boy. Because that's what Zier does. She's dumb and she thinks she's fucking top shit. So we are going to bonus action dash. Because I'm a rogue and I'm cool like that. So I will get here. I always forget how you measure and then have it move after you measure. That's a roll 20 seeker that has always evaded me, but, um... Oh, jeez. So I'm up in there. Sorry, you're the rogue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Oh. And I will go ahead and do an attack with my short bow, since I'm not quite in Strecken range. All right. And I'll focus on the alpha. Okay. So that is a eight to hit. That'll miss. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I make a silly little face at it because I think I'm awesome. All right. Uh, the Lycan oh, Alpha dear. is going to use its first legendary action. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah! Well, this, how are you feeling about the decision the two of us made? <laughs> and that action is called Hunter's Charge. Awesome! <laughs> going to move to right here, and as it runs in, it swings its Warhammer. Zira is about to learn such an important lesson. I'm so excited uh, for her. That is a 29. Oh, that hits so hard. <laughs> okay. For 23 bludgeoning damage. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> I need you to make a strength saving throw. That broke. <laughs> I told you she was going to be dumb. Strength saving throw. 17. Okay. 
Um, you are thrown by the force of this 20 feet back and land prone on the ground as this warhammer <laughs> collides yeah. with your chest and sends you flying into <sighs> the air. <laughs> uh-huh. Awesome. It is now the Lycan's turn. <laughs> I love this character. Good thing she's dead. <laughs> uh huh. This one's gonna dash. That one's gonna dash. Thankfully, they are dashing. You were just far enough out. Like actually, the the alpha hitting you saved your life. I know. I'm well aware. <laughs> I'm so deeply aware. Red. <laughs> Did it? Did it really? Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Uh, so they're all going to just dash up. All right. And then these guys are just going to kind of move up to flank. Um... And uh, so that will be the end of their turn. The four in the back with longbows are going to move forward. Uh um, And they are going to just draw their bows and be ready to shoot. Um, So that will bring us to the top of the lineup. However, from this building here, down a little bit to the south, Excuse me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just what I just what we need. A woman in a long black coat with gray hair pokes her head out and says, "Come quickly, quickly! You must not be caught out in the dark. Come, hurry, hurry! I can only hold them for a moment." And then she draws a glass vial from her coat and throws it. It lands here with a clink, and you see a green a green smoke coming out, and the lichens look up and start to sniff, and their eyes go towards the smoke. You are all smart enough to know that this smoke will dissipate soon. In game terms, that means you have two turns of distraction. Where is she? Where's the woman that threw it? I'm looking for her on the she map. She is, uh, I, she's not, I don't have a token for her, I'm just, I'm pinging the, the building she's in. Hold on, I gotta zoom out by a lot of it. It's the building closest below us. Okay, I see it. Checkerboard building. So Clovis was out of fear, just running straight far away from them. Um, But as he starts to reach the tree line, a a separate equal fear uh, (laughs) takes over him and prevents him from moving forward as well. Um, And at that, I think the woman's voice catches his attention and he just... Uh, and starts charging uh, towards her. So, not going to dash this time. But Okay. 30 feet down. Um, actually, I am going to dash, because nobody that I need to help is in range. Once again, my turn. Okay. Um, that will bring us to Cleden. Uh huh. Um, I am. What can I do? Nothing. I I can't. I can. I can do a whole lot of nothing. So the smoke is drawing... It's drawing the lichens away, yes. Okay. And... But they are still... They have... They seem to be not paying attention at all to the prone Mm -hmm. satyr that they were just until recently going to devour. Great. Um... I am gonna look up at... You know, now, now I'm... my party is fairly close to me. Uh, I'm just going to yell. Just going to say He is testing me today. I I can't and and 
anyone who even remotely looks in my direction, like, I, my face is, re I'm, like, sobbing. I am sobbing. <laughs> I can't. You, you must help them. And I book it uh, towards Clovis as well. <laughs> I shall see you in the safety. And I am going to dash as well. Okay. That's 60. That's... Or, hold on, that's... Yeah, okay. That's 12. Uh, well, that ends your turn, or do you have a bonus action? I... That is... That is going to end my turn. I don't think I'm within range to do much else before I started running, and I am not the type to charge towards this foe. Okay. Missouri. All right, I got to ask. Is, um, if I have the, uh, the goat charge in, is it my full action to grab on and just kind of allow myself to be pulled along? Um... With, uh, basically, I'm just using my chain to loop just to be drug along quickly so that I can... Basically, I'll, I'm allowing it to act. I will allow you to do that as a free object interaction and hold your turn until the goat is done. Yes. Um, so I will allow the... Uh, so the goat, I'm just going to say... Well, today, we're, I guess we're not going to be nightmares. Go. And the second the goat takes off in a dash towards Zir, I'm looping my chain around its horns to be drug along. Okay. The goat will drag both of us to right here. Okay. I will use my action to put her on the goat. Okay. Um, I can't move her onto it. Um, That's okay. She, she, yeah, she is on the goat. Um, if the goat d dashes, then I think it has, let me see. Uh, no, I wouldn't be able to move much more. I'd be able to move 10 feet with her. That's about um, it. One of the... She one very the... weakly says, don't touch me. I can handle it. One of the feral <laughs> like bleeding out <laughs> is going to take a swing at, um, at Mazora as this happens. Uh, just, just lash out with a claw. Am I in range? Man, that thing is uh, a good when, range. When you when you reached down to get her, because they oh, were surrounding every her, yeah. Okay. Uh, twenty two to hit. Woo. Yeah, it's gonna hit me easily. All right, that is seven slashing damage. Oh, that's that's yeah, that's not much. Um, okay, but um, I need to make a concentration check. Correct. Um, so a two. All right, so... It really Zier, doesn't matter what... It doesn't yeah. matter what my bonus Zier is. goes up on the goat, and with that slash, um, Zier, you kind of fall down onto your butt again as the goat vanishes into smoke. No, it's two. He, it's only half of his health. Yeah, but, like, the he jitters, and so Zier would fall through. Oh, okay. There's that brief schism where he is um, incorporeal for a moment. So, Zier, you are no longer prone, but you are also no longer on the goat. <laughs> Sweet. And the goat, right. uh, the goat does now appear to be in pain. Uh, Bosric. Well, I'm going to use my movement. Okay, yeah, go for it. Um, so I'm, I'll start moving away, and Sinzir is active and able to get up now. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. I'll tell her, get on him fast, and I'll look at him and say, "Time to be a hero, my friend." And I'm going to start uh, moving away. Because there's okay. not much I can do at this point. Um, let me see here. Okay, so I start moving away, and then that'll end my turn. All right. Bosric. I'm going to... Um... Oops, 30 feet to right there... Dash another 30 to right there. 
And but keep my crossbow ready just in case, and kind of track their movement in case I need to intervene. Okay. Give me just one second. I, I'll okay. Sorry, stream, if you're not hearing the music. Um, we will address that next time. Uh, this is not something I'm used to, so I'm trying to make sure everything goes according to plan. So next week, you'll hear the Tasty Jams. Uh, I promise you, they are tasty. But that will bring us to the Alpha, who is going to howl again and dash straight down towards the smoke. Zier. Well. So... Does the goat have, like, a preparedness to run? Uh, the goat um, actually looks like it is in pain. So if I were to get on it now as part of my turn... You would have to wait until it's turn for it to move. Yeah, I'll forego. Um, Will you for goat? I'll for goat the goat. <laughs> um, I got hooves too, bitch. I start booking it. <laughs> I have learned my lesson. <laughs> I am going in the same direction as uh, Missouri. I'll actually pass him. <laughs> I will do a good old bonus action dash. Catching up with almost to the group. Just, um, just for clarification, do satyrs not have a movement of 35? Because Ooh, if they not. do, you have two extra squares of dash. Oh, they do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yay, thanks, Red. Got you. <laughs> Yay, here Sater I am. Satyr comes on. <laughs> yeah. Death comes on swift wings. I'm glad you told me that now instead of earlier because... <laughs> yeah. yeah that <laughs> I would have dashed in closer and that would have been bad. <laughs> it's all good. Um, okay, uh, the non-bow lichens all move down kind of as a unit to sniff the thing, except the one that slashed um, Missouri, which seems to have a scent for him. It is going to make its way over to him, and it is going to make its attacks. It is going to first try and bite you. It will probably succeed. Yes. Uh, well, for seven piercing damage. Okay. And then it is going to slash out at you with its claws. Yep, sounds about right. Uh, that might miss, actually. I mean, if what you're wearing it? any kind of armor, it's got a 10. Yeah, I win. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> He's not supposed to be able to avoid those hits. What's up? <laughs> um, so the claw connects. You feel it hit skin. But then it's almost as if your arm has turned to smoke as the claw passes through it, and the lichen looks at its hands and then looks back at you and snarls. Uh, the lichens with bows uh, just seem very confused. Um, but they are going to start moving closer. Um, but they don't fire as if they are waiting for instruction from the Alpha. Clovis. So, um, I think running down Clovis would still be fully in his sphere. But hearing uh, Quedon running after him, I think Clovis is a coward second and a cleric first. Uh, and I think he would turn around <clears throat> and hearing someone in need of his aid behind him, uh, he would uh, rush to Quedon's side and try and put hands on you and say, Are you all right? All right. Quedon, I will allow you to retake your fear check with advantage. Because you see, you see something solid in the eyes of this half elf, as if they are backed up by the city itself. Highest of the two rolls is going to be a seventeen. The DC was a sixteen. The fear right. fades from you as you realize that yes, this is just a test, and you mm -hmm. have to pass. 
you have to make up for the crime you committed. I... I must be all right. I simply must be. The... There's not much I can do for him. Uh, I point at Mizura, but he needs your help. Uh, and I'm going to cast heroism on you. Great. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. Very cool. Nice move, Clovis. <laughs> um, that is my turn. All right. Uh, you do still have some movement. Uh, you only used five feet to get to him. You have 25 more that you can move towards the door if you want. Mm. Clovis pulls out his shield. Okay. He is standing here. All right. That is my turn. All right. Quite a... It is your turn. You have four temporary hit points now from heroism. Great. Um... You're also immune to the frightened condition. Great. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. I... I am going to... Let's see here. Where is... All right, this guy... How far away is he from me? That's... What is the range on that? Let's... Ah, I'm not trying to move myself, just trying to see how far away I am from... You're totally fine. Uh, from here. the foe here. You are 65 feet from that lichen. Great. That'll be... Hmm. Okay. I am going to approach the danger. Uh, yeah. I'm going to move my 30 feet bring me here ish <clears throat> yeah <laughs> roll 20 issues apologies no no it's fine mm -hmm. i am also very and new. and also if... your your newfound inspiration making me completely rethink my turn <laughs> if you watch if you watch any um, lawful stupid, you will find out all of us are in constant war with Roll20. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. I am... Apologies for... No need my, to apologize. My, this my is intense, and yes. probably probably not what you expected for day one. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how bad is, um, is Bosric looking? Ah, uh, Mazura. Oh, my bad. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Uh, um, Missouri, in, uh, yeah. He, I mean, from where you are, you probably can't see too much, but he, because uh, I wasn't scratched on the back, and my back is to you. Yeah. Um, there's definitely some blood. I mean, you can't see how bad, but I don't seem to be uh, excited. So Great. I I will say this um, <laughs> mm -hmm. just for the like because it's weird to like gauge damage but Quiden yeah. you specifically and I, I say this for everyone if ever Quiden asks you how bad you are you can be very specific. Uh, Quiden, um, sorry, Quiden is he is so connected to death that he can see someone's proximity to it, so you can tell him how bad off you are. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, out of um, out of one to a hundred, uh, uh, um. I'm down about, I'm down, I'm, I'm down, uh, I still have 15. I still have 15. I don't even know. I, wait, I'm already dead. Wait, wait, wait. That, what? No, no. I'm one to 100%. I'm, uh, I have 15 hit points left. No. Great. No, it's a, a joking uh -huh. way we do it at Lawful Stupid, where we'll be like, oh, looking at us from, uh, yeah, here's sure. our exact hit point total. On a scale of 1 to 55, at about a 13. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, okay. 15 hit points left. I look, um, I, I look like I'm about half health. Okay. Not... Not being able to do... Okay. Let me just make sure... I believe I am just within... God, am I, am I, even, am I within 30 feet? I... You should be. Yeah. 
Cool. Great. Uh, not being able to do much. Okay. I'm just going to just in. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna do the first thing that comes to his mind, which is just it fear like still like tears streaming down his cheeks but like embolstered with a new just ferocity uh -huh. uh i am actually going to curse this thing all, all right. right i'm gonna do i'm gonna channel divinity path to the grave and just give you the best chance that you can at taking this thing down uh, just with a resounding, just a yell. Just, let's see here. Mm -hmm. uh, cursing it to the end of the next turn. Um, so, anything that attacks, any, anything that hits that guy, that guy is super vulnerable. Uh, um, that'll be... So it has vulnerability to all attack damage. Okay. Yes. All right. Sounds good. And that's the best move I think I can make for my current spot. Uh, just try okay. to put the fear of one particular god in his <laughs> eyes. All right. Then, Mazura, that will be you. Given the uh, what's happened to Goat and myself, is it possible to reverse our roles? Because knowing my uh, his existence is tied to mine, the Goat would probably reactively do something to preserve uh, yeah, his own. Yeah, I will always allow you to let the Goat go first. Um, so knowing that he's already taken damage, if he takes more damage himself, he might live. But if I take damage, he might uh, go back to uh, once he came until next time. Um, I'm going to say he's going to do... Um, he's going to do, uh, a charge. Um, he's okay. going to run at him and do a ram. All right. Um, uh, which is easily, easily more than 20 feet. Um, and hopefully it, it, it works. Um, okay. let me go to this character sheet. Um, so let me do a roll here to see if he hits. Um, his ram gets a plus five. So okay. So that's going to be a 17 plus five. It's going to be a... Wow, I've mapped. 22. That'll hit. Okay, and for damage, I'm glad I grabbed extra dice. So it's 4d4 so that... plus 3. Yeah, 4d4 plus 3. So 4, 5, 8, 10. Um, so it'll be, uh, that's the, the, the 2d4, 2d4. So, that's the, so it's going to be... 13 damage. Okay. And it has to make a, a saving throw. Uh, DC 13 strength um, or be knocked prone. All right. It's going to attempt to do that. It will it succeed. Will I have faith prone. in it. Uh, I know. Um, seeing but that I... attention I'm... is no longer on you. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um... But I can't let my friend die. Um, so I will just um, – what I did earlier to Clovis, I'm going to make myself even bigger. My skin will pale and darken. My eyes will go a deep black. You cannot see any light in. The, actually, the light around me seems to dim, and I am going to activate my necrotic shroud and just say, you will know fear as your insides are pulled out. And I will attempt to, um, it has to uh, pass a uh, charisma saving throw 15 or become frightened. Okay. Um, so those of you who looked, because I do want to describe a little bit of uh, the way that flavor works. Um, when you looked at Quedon, he appeared to have a turtle shell on his back. And now as you look at um, Missouri, you have all probably experienced Ace Mar before. 
You have seen what necrotic shrouds look like. You have seen what all the shrouds look like. Usually a necrotic shroud looks like bone wings. That is not what his necrotic shroud looks like. His necrotic shroud, the wings that come out of his back, look almost draconic. I would like to point out, uh, Red, you would also see billowing smoke. Yes. Uh, well, um, that doesn't matter what the DC was, because it got a four, so it's frightened of you. Yeah. So <laughs> it is... Um, yeah, so it's got a four, so it's going to... Uh, be frightened of me, which means I can now move absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. um, so I will take my full movement. As I'm moving, I will say um, to the goat, thank you, we must leave. And I will move my full 30. Uh, let me find out where that is. Hello, buddy. <laughs> Over next to Queden. And I'll move next to Queden um, as the wings start to, uh, I mean, how many turns? I think that's, uh, how long is that active? Um, or is it still just the way I look now? Uh, I believe that is just the way you look now for a while. Okay, so I will approach him and just say, we must go. And my voice is still harsh and gravelly, and I'm still billowing smoke with these draconic wings that are kind of arced in. Uh, it lasts for a minute. A minute? Okay, yeah, it's going to be there for a little bit then. All right. Um, so that will bring us to Bosric. Well, I would love to pull out some sort of strange, arcane, divine, unholy power, but I'm a fighter, so I'm just going to move. <laughs> hey, you know what? Fighters have the best spell in the game. It's Fist. <laughs> T no, take much. it from Adrastos. Fist is a good spell. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but monks do it. Monks do it with flair. <laughs> uh, this is the anyway, door, by the way. Moving this, on, uh, kind of like house movie. looking thing. Oh, that's the door. Yes. Okay, that's the door. Uh, then how far can I move to that door? Um, the door is open, so a dash will actually take you into the building. Uh, I don't want to go completely into the building because I want to make sure everyone gets in first and kind of cover. Gotcha. So I'm going to actually just move to here and keep okay. my crossbow handy, hold an action just in case I need to put the fear of engineering and uh, propelled metal and wood into something. Okay. Um, that will bring us to the alpha who is going to continue down uh, his full movement. Um, he sniffs the smoke, and something actually drives him away. Um, it seems like there was something magical in the smoke, and the um, creatures, not knowing any better, are just going to follow him. Zier. Oh, you know. Doing what everybody else is doing. <laughs> Getting the heck out of here. Heroically run. That is that's, away, away. that is the plan. I will. Nothing wrong with a strategic retreat. As I told you guys from the beginning, there will be fights you cannot win. Absolutely. <laughs> We're not running. We're just charging in the opposite direction. Exactly. I like your outlook. Better to fight the foe you don't know than the one you do. And you said the entry is this little... The little, like, alcove, yeah. Sweet. Oh, but I know. I think I remembered. Yes, here it is. <laughs> whoops, 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 whoops. Just kidding. Oh, jeez. be here. <laughs> Wheel! I know. <laughs> Could you see the arrows? I did, yeah. Oh, nice, okay. Yeah, it zips you over. So that's if you press Q, but it's a little, it's a little confusing to look at. Cool. Yeah, and it doesn't always take the best path necessarily, but that's okay. Anyways, I'm here now. Awesome. I I once I finally I run past and now I'm right next to <laughs> to Bosric and I I'm I'm pretending to look cool, <laughs> like Zira's doing everything to save face from the fact that she's at <laughs> one hit point. <laughs> Fair enough. Boz doesn't say anything. <laughs> Not a word. Just keeps eye and make sure he doesn't have to shoot something. She's like, right. yeah, she's like, I'm so tough. <laughs> I'm the toughest around. 
<laughs> not yet, not my last night, yeah. <laughs> so it seems like the smoke has begun to fade. Um, so this is this will be the last turn of distraction. Uh, this lichen that is afraid of uh, Mazora is going to attack his goat. It will have disadvantage, but it's still a creature. So goat. <laughs> Uh, that will be a 10 with the bite. Can't hear you. I was like, yes, still good. Okay, and now the claws. Okay, my not uh, natural anymore. one. So that will be a miss. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not only a natural one, but two natural ones. We are never going nice. to get that lucky again. This is it. No. Yep. You crafty, amazing goat, you go, baby, go. Unfortunately, the lichens in the back have regained their wherewithal and are going to fire their spore thorn arrows at him. They have four shots, one each. The first one. 22. He's got an 11 AC. You, you okay. got him. You got him good. Sorry, Mr. Four Mr. piercing damage plus five necrotic damage. Uh, he'll fade away. He'll fade away into smoke. Um, then with that, the other three are just going to shoot shots. Uh, one at Quieten and two at Mazora, but they do have disadvantage because you are far away. Uh, these are short bows they are firing, not long bows. So the one at Quieten. With disadvantage, that is a 13. That won't Quieden. do it. Sorry, sorry, Quieden. <laughs> that won't do it. Great. Uh, and the first one at Missouri. 13. Nope. The second one at Missouri. I'm really glad they're rolling with disadvantage because the event, the other side was 22 and 20. Uh, 16. Uh, 16. Uh, that is my AC. That, okay, beats I, it, beats it. Uh, so uh, yep. that will be 6 piercing and 5 necrotic. Uh, um, I am resistant to necrotic. All right, then it is two necrotic, because I rounds down. Um, okay, how, how much was that total? Uh, eight total. Um, uh, still good. Quedon, as you look over, you see this arrow hit, and then you see black liquid start to leak out of the wound. Cool. This liquid you have seen before. A lot. <laughs> uh-huh. On the piles of corpses With that were brought to you. Yes, all right, that is the end of the Lycan's turn, which will bring us to Clovis. Okay, um, so my allies are still still out there. Um, I don't know where. What would, what would Clovis do? Um, WWKD. WWKD. Um. Um, I think how we we have hit this lone lone wolfman, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, several times, several times. Okay. Um, is he? How far away is he? And <laughs> you have you have hit him a lot, and he does not appear to have taken any visible damage. Oh. I see. Like you know, you know, you have hit him. Mm -hmm. Um, he's not bleeding from any of his wounds. It seems like the arrows aren't penetrating all the way. It seems like the hits aren't connecting. Okay. Like you know, you hit him. You've seen it. Right. You even gave him vulnerability. Well, your Queden friend gave him vulnerability, but it seems like he's not doing the trick. Hmm. Well. Maybe some guiding bolts will do the trick. Uh, that's uh, that will hit, and it will take 16 radiant damage. Hmm. Okay. And the next attack against it has advantage. Uh, does that appear to have done any... Yes. Vis okay. So that, that hit has made the purchase. Um, in that case, I will uh, not run towards them, but um, I will sort of stand my ground and shift 
uh, 15 feet uh, in a diagonal, right? Keeping my, my uh, closeness to the door, but preparing myself for these other enemies to, to come forward. Okay. Um, and I will say, Queden, Missouri, now! All right, that will bring us to Queden. Cool. I am definitely going to run, but I am going to ca- I'm going to give you uh yeah, you are not doing well, Missouri, are you? Uh, not even a little. Yeah, though. I'm going to give you a second level cure wounds. So that'll bring you to wait. There's always a novelty to me when a cleric of the Death God uses any kind of healing magic. <laughs> uh, not as much as I'd like. Yeah, just going to put a hand on your shoulder, meaningful given my aversion to touch, uh, and that'll be uh, nine extra hit points to you. As I say... <sighs> familiar foe I'm fighting tonight, but I will not let my new friends fall. No. We have a calling. Let us run. All right. And then I will just reply to that with, then run. Aye. And I take my full movement towards Clovis. Okay. Also, uh, just to not leave anyone out, druids of the Death God too. Always fun to see them use healing. Might be one of Look. might be one of those in the chat. I, I mean, know. if you think about it, they've got the best manager Look, out there, so he I will inevitably s- tell them when they shouldn't. I yeah. survey the boundaries between the living and the dead. That doesn't mean that those I like I can't prolong slightly. Oh, there's I have no problem with it. I, <laughs> I love it. You are you are an arbiter of death. All right, so that is Queden's turn, uh, unless you have a bonus action. Not one that I particularly want to use, I don't think. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm, not right now. No. All right. Mazura. I really don't have much choice at this point. Go Nads the Goat is gone. I'm just reading chat. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I have to uh, basically um, charge as much as I can. So I'll take the full... Um, Full dash action, and I will apparently be able to run right inside the building. Uh, the door is a little lower. It's this right here in the center. Well, 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 Fook. Um, <laughs> but you can almost get there. Yeah, so... Not bad, not bad. I'm right on the... Oh, that's the wrong damn thing. Okay. Oh, no wonder it wasn't working. I was targeting the wrong <laughs> damn creature. I was like, how did it get so far away? Um, yeah, I can get right to the door. Okay, so. All right. All right. And then I'll end my turn. As I'm as I'm dashing by, you just see smoke and wings just. <laughs> so, Mazora, as you get to the door, um, yeah. the woman in the long black dress is actually going to kind of, like, put a hand on your back and sort of shove you in with surprising strength for an old gal. And you kind of sprawl onto the floor of this tavern where you now see several other inhabitants are cowering below the windows. They're holding weaponry. Uh, Weaponry you've never seen before. Strange metal tubes. Uh, And they're all cowering low. Okay. Um, I'll just move myself inside. Okay. All right, Um, that will bring us to Bosric. Uh, I don't like how close that one is. Let me make sure I've got the range. I will take a five-foot step forward. Okay. Putting him just in my range, and I will shoot him. Okay. Uh, you also have advantage uh, because of the guiding bolt. Indeed, neat. Well, double damage. 
Oops. Uh, which is good because that was a natural. Yeah, because that's one, a natural right? one. Yeah. That was a seven. Uh, that will unfortunately be unsuccessful. Went wide. Um, All righty. I'll just um, take another step. To mark my arrow missing, then I will just take the rest of my movement to the door, but not in it. Again, covering to make bonus action reload, covering to make sure everyone gets in first. Gotcha. Standard Vermilion Vigil practice. All right. Uh, the Alpha has <laughs> shaken off whatever was bothering it and is now headed back in your direction. Uh, he can get right about to this tree line here, um, and he howls loudly. Um, and you can see coming from the trees, there are more of these creatures coming from the boundaries. Um, but that is all he can do. Zir. Inside. Safe. Enter. <laughs> do not wish to be out here anymore. Uh, the old woman gives you the same kind of shove, but you, because you still had movement left, you land on your feet. You see the, the people cowering. You see the strange weaponry. Um, and that will bring us to the Lycans. Turn. I will continue to act tough. I do not want the people cowering to seek that. I am right. injured, so I'm hiding it as well as I can. This one is going to move to Quedon, but that is its full uh. movement. Um, so it can't do anything else. Uh, the pack that followed the Alpha are going to move up and kind of just surround the Alpha. And then the four with bows are going to move forward 30 feet. So they will move to here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Uh, kind of just here-ish. Uh, they still all have disadvantage, but two are going to shoot at Quedon, and two are going to shoot at Clovis. So these will be the two against Quedon. Mm -hmm. Number one. Seven. That's a miss. Number two. Seventeen. Meets it, beats it. That will be... Seven piercing damage and one necrotic. Aye. Two against Clovis. Didn't you have a shield of faith? Yeah, it was... I, I 17 was counting for the shield of faith. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, the first one is an eight, so that is a miss. The second one is a nine, also a miss. That's uh, you can you feel... also had four temporary hit points from Thank Herald. you. Yes, so that is only... I did forget about that one. You feel um, the arrows bounce off of your shield. Great. Um, all right, but that is the end of the Lycan's turn, which will bring us to Clovis. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to move my five feet up to Guidon and say, hope you didn't need to keep being brave, uh, and I'm going to end my concentration on heroism and instead cast Sanctuary on them. All right. Sanctuary... Uh, so they will now have to uh, make wisdom saving throws to try to hit you, and if they fail, they have to hit someone else. Okay. Um, All right. Is there anything else that I can do here? Um, I have no idea what this spell does. Um, no. Um, Okay, um, and then I'm going to draw my mace, which I might actually need to use, uh, <laughs> and smash it against the shield. Break against the wall! And that is my turn. Clovis, take an inspiration for that. That was Yay! awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Quedon. <laughs> Good spirit, but... In a quivering voice, 
that only Clovis can hear, I just repeat over and over again, it's not him, it's not him, it's not him, and I take a swipe and I'm going to uh, inflict wounds that motherfucker. All right. Give it to him. Yep. Cool. That is a nat 20 for a 26. Oh, wow. All right. Well. Um, so. First nat 20 of the campaign. First Question nat 20 mark? of the campaign. Yep. I love that the first nat 1 was by enemies and the first nat 20 was by heroes. That makes me very happy. So. <laughs> I am Someone going should to, multi-class the bard so we can do air guitars. I am going to right? steal the, the crit roll from our lo my lovely DM, Tam, because I like it. This will do full damage plus mm -hmm. what you roll. That is how this crit will work. So you do maximum damage, 60, and 10. then... Yes. 60. Okay. Um, plus, then you well, don't need to roll? Yeah, great. Queden, how do you want to do this? Yay. <laughs> how do I want... Uh, I don't, man. Then I, <laughs> I have a fun description if, if you... Okay. Yeah. I am just... I, I'm gonna... What did you have in mind? So, um, as Quedon reaches out, and the you all can feel that, that divine energy channel through Quedon, for just a moment, everything gets silent. And then out from the tree line, you can hear the padding of feet. A gigantic black wolf streaks out through Quedon's body, grabs this lichen in its jaws, and drags it into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I... <sighs> and all of you here resonating through the trees. He is mine! I know I should be moving. I... I fucking... I, I fucking... I'm on the ground. I'm bur I'm in so many tears. Uh, it is later action now. Come on, you two. I yeah. I'm. I just. I limp and hobble like f pure emotional damage. Truly, um, <laughs> and take uh, take the rest of my movement that uh, thirty feet towards. Uh, Towards the hut. All right, go for it. Missouri. you are in the hut. You are safe. Your friends are not. Okay. Um, looking out there, uh, let's see. What can I actually do? Um, is anything, uh, just looking through the door, is any of the, any of the lichen actually looking at um, that gr them at all? Uh, or yes. They just, there is a large they, group of lichens approaching you all. Well, fucking balls. Um, but it doesn't look thing. like they'll be able to make it this turn. Oh yeah, no, I'm. Yeah. There's really not much I can do at that point then, so I'm just gonna we wait go. and see what happens. Just run, boys, run. Okay. Um, in the interest of our time and the fact that they cannot make it to you before you make it inside, all of you are able to make it in the door. The door slams behind you. As one of the lichens comes forward, the old woman picks up one of the strange metal tubes and pulls another piece of metal. All of you hear a sound like thunder as flames shoot out of the end of this barrel, and one of the lichens falls with a gaping hole in its chest. The door oh, slams behind you. And she says, that was close. We will wait here until the sun rises. And that will be the end of episode one of Biting Malevolence. <laughs>